cups with both of them. It was a, a great part of my life and I was very pleased with it. You had to uh, keep a lowish profile once you joined Rangers, didn't you? Fairly low. Uh, Cap <laughs> Captain Nemo, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Paul, of course, as I said, you're sadly now lost mm. to, to football mm. because of injury. What are you up to at the moment? Well, I'm working, uh, still involved with Chelsea, which has been great. I mean, Ken, uh, the chairman, has been very good in Glen Hoddle. Ken I'm, Bates and Glen yes, Hoddle, Yes, right? I mean, they've been fantastic, sincere, very compassionate. And I'm working on the, a bit on the coaching side and, and on the PR side in conjunction with their sponsors who are Cause Lager at present. But you miss playing? Oh, nothing like it, rest assured. Mo, as usual, you're, you're in the headlines again, possibly moving from Hearts. Or are you? What's going what's to happen? Well, the situation's fairly clear. I've got 16 months of my contract. Um, I aim to see it out. Whether it's in the reserves of the first team, it's up to Colin McLean. Talk of Air United, is that nonsense? No, I wouldn't be going to play in the first division. No? Not at all. So, uh, for now, you're going you're gonna to stay with Hearts? Yes. No, no matter what? No matter what. Okay, Mo. Well, right now, it's your chance to win a league championship football if you can name the first goal scorer in today's Old Firm encounter. The lines are open now. 0839 4 is the number, and they'll stay open until kick-off time at 3 o'clock. Mark Hately is the bookies' favourite at 9-2. to two followed by Andy Walker at 6-1, to one, then a list of players at 8s, Brian Laudrup, Charlie Nicholas, Gordon Jury, Simon Donnelly and Willie Faulkner. It's 10-1 to one John Collins, 12s Charlie Miller and 14s Phil O'Donnell. And the Scott Sport phone lines are also open if there are any points you want to raise arising from yesterday's games or today's old firm encounter or indeed any issues from the week in which Rangers signed Alan McLaren at last and Hearts got more than a million pounds plus Dave McPherson in exchange. And Celtic and Wraith Rovers won the right to meet in the Coca-Cola Cup final next month. Call us free on 0500 404 treble o to put your points. To my guests this afternoon, they know all about derbies and the old firm derby as well, John Cahoon and Gordon Smith. Thanks, Paul. We'll be starting the build-up to Celtic Rangers in earnest shortly, but for now, we're going to concentrate on yesterday's football programme, beginning at Easter Road with Hibernian against Hearts. Hibs really went at Hearts from the start at Easter Road, clearly intent on gaining a second consecutive league win over their great rivals. Neil Berry had to move quickly there to keep Darren Jackson out. And they took an early lead. Mickey Weir got possession and headed straight down the slope. He held off Gary Mackay and somehow managed to stay in his feet. Joe Tortolano then helped out. He crossed and Jackson headed in. The Hibs fans inside Easter Road went wild. And wilder still, a minute later, Brian Hamilton's long ball sent Jackson off and running. Craig Levine got in a challenge, but the ball fell into the path of Michael O'Neill, and Hibs were two up. The fans wanted more, Hibs boss Alex Miller asked for calm. And Jackson should have killed the game off as a contest just after that. He evaded Levine, but right in front of goal, he blasted over. Hearts had taken a first half pounding. Comeback man Dave McPherson came close to bringing his side back into it. He hit one from long range, but Jim Layton watched it fly wide. But that Jackson O'Neill combination continued to torment Hearts. Jackson tried to pick out his teammate, but McPherson kept O'Neill out. After the break, Hart set about turning things around. Young Alan Johnson pushed forward, and in the end, Leighton had to react quickly to keep him out. But they were coming more and more into it now. Scott Leach got on the end of John Robertson's cross, but Leighton did even better this time. But Hearts couldn't take their chances. Stephen Frail pushed forward. Tosh McKinley crossed, but substitute John Cahoon headed wide with just Leighton in front of him. But then with 10 minutes to go, they were thrown a lifeline. Frail in the thick of it again. Love and Tortolano hesitated, Frail nipped in, but then went down. Referee Williamson pointed to the spot. In replay, there didn't appear to be too much in this. But a penalty awarded all the same. Robertson duly buried it. And right at the end, a final chance for Hearts. It fell to Johnson, but he couldn't get it on target. And another Edinburgh Derby win for Hibbs. 
I think the preparation all week has been good, you know, and the, the team had an edge to it right from the start today. We went in 2 0 up at half time, and really, we maybe could have been three or four up. Darren missed a good chance, and we had maybe a, a few more half chances. And if we'd have got the third goal, we'd maybe have gone on and scored more. But all credit to Hearts, they came back into it in the second half. A few jittery moments just in the dying minutes. That's right, you know, we, we got ourselves in a rut a bit. We've done that a couple of times this season when we've had a two goal lead. We really should go on and build on it. But I think it's playing up the hill, caused us a few problems as well. But uh, I didn't think it was a penalty, but, you know, Hearts, Hearts probably deserved to get um, a goal at some stage in the game. They had a lot of pressure, but we managed to hang on. So back to back Edinburgh Derby victories for Hibs and they go top of the table. We're going for a break now. And while we do, see if you can name the scorer of this old firm goal from the dim and distant past. Blame him. Heavy. OK, if I move back from the sun, there's the earth and the moon. Now, let's see how far away Saturn is. Wow, over 900 million miles. Doing your homework? Yeah, nearly finished. What powerful PC processor gives educational programmes out of this world performance? And now, the Kirathi system. The Intel Pentium processor. The Bosch cordless drill puts technology at your fingertips. It allows you to drill and screw drive effortlessly. Its battery is rechargeable up to a thousand times. And its quick-changing keyless chuck makes life even easier. Bosch. Excellence comes as standard. Nice car. Want to show me what it can do? The mobile phone company with more subscribers than the rest put together has stolen another march. With Vodafone Digital, the only digital service with both national coverage and the option of half-price calls to anywhere in the UK from the urban area of your choice. And the chance to make and receive calls in most of Europe and beyond. Vodafone. Vodafone. Nobody goes further to keep you in touch. I'm afraid what you've got here, Gov, is a problem with the auxiliary drive belt condition. You're going to have to check for glazing or separation of the belt plot. Drive belt tension might be a problem there again. It won't be if you've got a... Yak! Tensioner. You're going to need a second part. The party in the first part under section 2.4, subsection 3, under paragraph 6. The first party shall, upon fulfilment of the aforementioned conditions, be entitled to exclusive enjoyment... Yak! Yak! ...its privileges thereto attached to the two enjoyed by the... I'm so sorry to have to tell you this, but because of the dilation of the cranial vortex and the acute hyperemic congestion, the superficial vasculature, which has caused an edematous reaction... Yak! At Nationwide, we like to keep money matters as simple. Forty fan belt. They lift you everything. Won't hurt a bit. Building relationships with Nationwide, the building society. Baxter. This little shooting forest. Jim Forrest is scorer for Rangers there, and that was in the League Cup final on the 24th of October 1964. Now, Motherwell also had the chance to go above Rangers yesterday, and they took it after something of a struggle against Kilmarnock at Fir Park. Motherwell started brightly. A great run by Rob McKinnon, who's been in tremendous form this season. His pass found the Irish international striker Tommy Coyne. 
but when he crossed, little Dougie Arnott just couldn't make it. But with 12 minutes gone, Kilmarnock moved into the Motherwell box. Tom Brown getting the break of the ball. It fell perfectly for Henry. He fired the visitors into the lead. John Henry makes it 1-0. Motherwell squared it eight minutes from the interval. McPherson's header failing miserably to find keeper Meldrum. Tommy Coyne doesn't miss those. McPherson despondent, Coyne delighted. But Kelly came at Motherwell again. Ali Mitchell's cross met on the volley by Andy Millen, but Steve Woods in the right position to save. The Ayrshire men had more luck in their next attack. McPherson's crossfield pass flicked on by Brown to Colin McKee, and the little striker picked his spot. 2-1 to Kilmarnock. It could so easily have been 3-1 at the break. McKee's long ball finding Tom Brown, who did everything right, except put the shot on target. And Alex Totten's men didn't let up in the second half. A crossfield move opened up the Motherwell defence. McKee's finish, though, well over the top. But the Kilmarnock defence floundered again in the 55th. McPherson getting a touch. Ali Mitchell helping the ball into his own goal. Within 60 seconds, Motherwell were ahead. Again, a defensive blunder for Killy. Again, Tommy Coyne punishing them for it. Encouraged by their quick-fire double, Motherwell went looking for another. And the arnott coyne shannon combination came close to pulling it off. Tommy Coyne playing it back. And that was just over the top. But Kilmarnock, to their credit, came charging back. Across from the left, flicked on by Colin McKee, with Woods beaten, the ball there coming off the post. Killy refused to give up. McKee again leading the assault on the Motherwell goal. But look out for Woods. Getting his foot in to stop the shot, it came off the bar, and it was scrambled to safety. If at first you don't succeed, try, try, try again. Kilmarnock did, but luck was definitely out. The ball cleared off the line, somehow Motherwell managing to take the points. Uh, well, it's been exciting right up till the end with all the games at the first part of the season, and I think once again, we've kept everybody right on the edge of their seat right through the end of the game. Alec, you've lost today, but you must have been delighted with the commitment the players showed. Yeah, they showed tremendous commitment, and I thought we outplayed Motherwell for long, long spells, and the two goals we got were, were tremendous goals. And uh, the second half, we hit the bar, we hit the post, they cleared off the line. So all in all, I felt the performance was good, but defensively, we lost some terrible goals, and I feel that uh, it's alright scoring goals, but the thing is, you've got to try and build the foundation at the back, you know, it's got to be solid, and uh, I felt really uh, Motherwell didn't win the game today, I felt we threw it away. So, Mother will move above Rangers, and their manager, Alex McLeish, is at Hamden now, talking to Jim Delahunt. Yes, welcome to Hamden for the first time. Alex McLeish has joined us. I know you're bigger than me, but I thought you were a wee bit fortunate to win yesterday. Um, well, maybe, Jim, but I think we played some good stuff. Uh, we've maybe been lucky on a couple of occasions when Kelly hit the woodwork. Credit to Kilmarnock, they, they gave us a really tough game yesterday. They played in a certain way, and it, and it definitely caused us problems. At 2-1 down, though, and they almost went 3-1 ahead, did you start to get a wee bit worried? Of course, yeah. I think when you, whenever you got a goal down or, you know, two goals down, you're always worried, but we said at half-time, you know, to keep our composure and not to, to get desperate, and because we felt that the chances would come with guys like Tommy Coyne and Dougie Arnott around, and, and that's what happened, and we've taken our chances, and as I said to you, Fortunate with the woodwork helping us out, and Billy Davis with a, a last minute goal line clearance. Yeah, the pressure's off you today, you can relax and watch this game. Are you yeah. looking forward to it? Yeah, very much so. I, uh, I took in my first ever old firm game a couple of years ago in the box uh, with, with you guys, and I really enjoyed the atmosphere. and I'm looking forward to it again today, but I'm going to sit in the fence and predict a draw. <laughs> You've had some great days here at Hamden, but the old firm game, for obvious reasons, was something you missed out on. Would, would you fancy playing in one at some time? Yeah, I, I'd love to have taken part in an old firm game. You, you read um, guys that like Paul Elliott in this morning's paper saying that there's nothing compares to it. It says possibly only the, the Milan derby, but in, and even in some cases that seems like a a picnic compared to the old firm one, so that, this is a, a bit 
bit of derby indeed, eh? Well, it's been a very good month for Motherwell, good month for yourself, and it's the Bells Manager of the Month award yes. to you, so we'll just hand yes, that over just now. And uh, first of a few trophies this season, perhaps? Well, um, I prefer a Manager of the Decade award, but <laughs> I've got to thank the players for this. They've, they've uh, had a great month, we've had four victories in October, and they've made this possible for us. That'll do for starters, Alec. Enjoy the game, and uh, back to Jim in the studio. Thanks, Jim. Well, one of the results which earned Alex McLeish the Manager of the Month award was achieved at Pitodre, where Aberdeen's form has been causing increasing concern. Yesterday, the Don showed a marked improvement, and that was against Dundee United. Two sides here who have it all to do if they're to impress their fans so far this season. The Dons haven't won in the league since the opening day. The first crack at goal came from the corner. Paul Kane promptly forcing another with the deflection. And from the corner, one of the strangest goals of the season. The ball in the back of the net, 1-0 to Aberdeen. The replay shows it went in off the goalkeeper, Kellum O'Hanlon. Another corner two minutes later, and the Dons were two up. Billy Dodds heading it on for Scott Booth, and Aberdeen turning round their fortunes. The perfect tonic for a Coca-Cola hangover. United tried to strike back on the break, but Snelders got down to this effort. Andy McLaren breaking through, but that's a good stop from the Dutch goalkeeper. But it was Aberdeen who looked to go three up before the interval, when Booth looked up and set up Brian Grant. A good one too, Booth playing it across, but Grant failing to hit the target. Scott Booth was definitely in the mood yesterday afternoon, causing havoc in the United defence and giving Woodthorpe a great chance to finish off the opposition. Final throw of the first half dice fell to Billy McKinley, the free kick. He's a specialist from this range, but no real problem for Theo Snelders. 2-0 at half-time to the Dons. Aberdeen stayed in top gear at the start of the second half. McKimmy's run and cross for Paul Kane. A good positive start for Willie Miller's men. It was the home side who always looked the more dangerous, and United old boy Ray McKinnon came close to burying his old teammates. But still, it was two. Next up was substitute Peter Heatherston, teeing up Scott Booth, and that's a brilliant drive just over the top. Finally, the Dons made it three. McKimmy's cross headed down for Paul Kane. He volleyed it past the goalkeeper, and the victory was secure. Number four now looks on when young Glass got in the end of this cross. Somehow the ball stayed out. Within seconds, United looked to have pulled one back, but Gary Smith cleared on the line. Or did he? Some thought it had crossed. Again, United on the attack. But again, the ball chested away. Good move in the dying moment. Substitute Jim McAnally back in the fold at Tannadice after an argument with Jim McLean. A good ball through to Andy McLaren. And his lob just beaten by the crossbar. A great afternoon's outing for the Dons. And time for another break now. In a couple of minutes, Partick Thistle against Falkirk. But right now, it's time to name the Old Firm goal scorer again. Full of knowledge about Scottish football, full of wisdom on tactics and play, constantly updating facts on teams, players, managers and results. Don't miss your copy every Monday in the Daily Record. I wish it had been around earlier. The new Compact Presario is a home computer that has everything you need to run your own business, including a built-in answer phone the and fax. It also comes with CD-ROM to bring interactive learning to your children and multimedia entertainment to you. The new Presario from Compact. How are you? Hi, nice I'm, to see I'm you. looking for a yes, new car. car. Take no my car, old car, but with a little more room. room. Yes, more economy, uh -huh. lower emissions. No problem. 
right. He wants a new car, like his old car, only better. Better. Do, do you work out? Huh? Texaco's new Clean System 3 is designed to clean more thoroughly than ever before. It gets to work from the first tank full. Like your old car, but better. Hey, what are you trying to pull? Just take her for a test drive. Use it regularly, and given time, you could feel you're in a different car. I'll take it. In avocado. New Clean System 3 from Texaco. Test drive it today. So, there we were, stranded. Then we got an idea. After a while, the others were exhausted. I flashed all night till you spotted us. If it hadn't been for my new Energizer lithium batteries... We'd never have found you, chaps. Excuse me. Need to take a breather? No. More rescue shots. Introducing Double Density Energizer Lithium, the longest-lasting battery in the world. It's all right, Flower. We're just going to fetch Daddy. He's missed his train. Ford, the people who were first to make anti-lock brakes standard on a car, and the first to build a driver's airbag into every car they make. I've done it again. All new Ford cars now come with a mobile phone. Hello? Hi, it's me. It's OK. Oh. Managed to get a lift. Oh, with free cute. connection and cell net line rental of less than £10 a month, you can stay in touch however far you go. Fords with phones, because you never know. The Bosch Delta Sander puts technology at your fingertips. Easy-to-fit accessories allow you to sand and polish the smallest areas and the tightest corners. Effortlessly. Bosch. Excellence comes as standard. Park to Chalmers. Johnston. Jimmy Johnston scoring for Celtic there, of course. Another goal from the 1964 League Cup final, which Rangers won by two goals to one. Now, Partick Thistle went into yesterday's game with Falkirk propping up the Premier Division. And that's still the case after 90 dramatic minutes at Fur Hill. The ground staff were working right up to kick-off at Fur Hill prior to the visit of Falkirk. Thistle had the first chance in the opening minute, Roddy Grant making the most determined effort to reach Kevin McKee's cross, but his header landed on the top of the net. Falkirk should have gone ahead in their first attack. Some determined running by Colin Cram, the vital component in the build-up, getting past Greg Watson and presenting Nicky Henderson with an open goal, but the striker couldn't make the connection. Thistle's opener was a nightmare for Falkirk goalkeeper Tony Parks. Well out of his goal, he hit a poor kick-out which Neil Oliver miskicked straight to Roddy Grant. The Thistle striker had the presence of mind to go straight for goal with Parks in no man's land. But the lead lasted all of a minute as from the kick-off Falkirk won a corner, Eddie May took it and John Clark bulleted home the equaliser. Having gifted Thistle the lead, Falkirk almost gave them another. Oliver's control letting him down with Andy Gibson giving chase. Park smothered the ball, and despite claims it was a pass back, the referee waved play on. With half-time approaching, Thistle scorer Roddy Grant went into the referee's book for persistent fouling, climbing all over Joe McLaughlin on this occasion. He claimed he was innocent, the referee disagreed. And there was worse to come for the striker in the second half. Then Eddie May linked with Nicky Henderson on the edge of the Thistle box and Nelson fingertipped the shot round the post. It was May again a couple of minutes later. His effort this time went wide of the target. But the ex-Hibs man wasn't to be denied. Jamie McGowan's centre rolled into his path by Colin McDonald to give May the easiest of tasks to make it 2-1 Falker. And just before the interval, Grant again got the better of the Falkirk defence to get onto a McKee cross. But, just as he'd done in the first minute, he headed onto the top of the net. 
Thistle trying to redress the balance in the second half. A clever variation on the free kick, almost paying off. Ian Cameron denied twice by Parks. Then Roddy Grant played his final part in the proceedings. Referee Ian Taylor judging that he elbowed McLaughlin and he reached straight for the red card. Ten-man Thistle came close to equalising, Cameron's cross reaching Alan Dinney, but his header came back off the base of the post. Then Isaac English went sprawling inside the box, but the referee said no penalty. Falkirk's best effort in the second half came late. Henderson made good space for himself, but side-footed his shot straight at Nelson. The Bairns, though, did hold on for three valuable points. Yes, we stressed to the players before they went out into the park that, you know, uh, that this was really a big game for Partick Thistle. Um, but it was also a big game for us because, you know, to go to, to Celtic last week and get three points is a real big bonus for us. Though we always felt that we, we could cause them problems and get a result there. But it would uh, really be good work done if we could come and win today. So it's turned out great for us. And, uh, you know, I thought we played very, very well the first half and uh, deservedly went in front. But we seemed to sit back in the second half and never got out of the bit. Uh, it just shows you, you know, we've learned a lot from the last time in Premier League. Premier League and, uh, you know, really part of this, I had very few opportunities for, for all the pressure they had. So good result. I'm delighted. So after yesterday's four matches, the Premier Division table looks like this. Hibernian and Motherwell have moved above Rangers. Celtic, Falkirk and Hearts are together on 16 points. Then it's Aberdeen and Dundee United with 11 points. Kilmarnock on 9 and Partick Thistle propping up the table on 8. And now to Dundee, where the home side is gaining a reputation for the outrageous way they've been celebrating goals this season. The talk of the Dens Park Terraces yesterday centred around what their heroes would do if they put the ball in the St Johnson net, and their team duly delivered. Dundee almost got off to the best possible start. Just 25 seconds gone, and Jordy Shaw's shot deflected past Andy Rhodes' post, a corner. Moments later, the home side almost took the lead. Torres cutting back a McCann cross into the path of Shaw, but he headed high over the bar. He knows he should have done better. The Saints went there simply to make up the numbers, and when Swedish trialist Jorgen Wellmark crossed from the left, it took a goal-line clearance from player boss Jim Duffy to deny Grant McMartin. Dundee came oh so close just before half-time. Rhodes again the hero, scrambling across his goal, to save Cargo's 25-yard drive. After the break, Wilmark's run and shot showed why Paul Sturrock was so keen to bring him to McDermott Park. The Perth fans have already warmed to the big striker. On the hour, Dundee went ahead. McCann's deep corner, headed back by McQuillan, Shaw on hand to knock the ball home from six yards, and then the celebration started. In a way, only Dundee players know how. The referee telling them to get on with it, hop to it. Shaw then had an opportunity to put the game beyond St Johnson. Tosh put him in the clear, and only a fine save from Rhodes denied him his second. St Johnson continued to press, but Dundee were dangerous on the break. Little Neil McCann displaying why he's such a target for the other clubs. A good run but eventually he was just off target. The Saints were determined to take something from this game and battled right till the final whistle. But no matter how hard they tried, they couldn't break down the Dundee defence. George O'Boyle having a go, a good win for Dundee. Well, Wraith Rovers reached the Coca-Cola Cup final in midweek with a dramatic penalty shootout victory over Airdrie. Yesterday, they were brought crashing down to earth at home to league leaders, Dunfermline. What a five derby this proved to be. With only two minutes gone, the Coca-Cola Cup finalists went ahead. Ian Redford releasing Barry Wilson on the right, and his lob over Ian Westwater seemed to take an age before hitting the back of the net.
Dunfermline responded almost immediately and when Paul Smith and Stuart Petrie combined to set up a chance for Mark Ward, it took a fine one-handed save from Ray Allen to deny the Pars the equaliser. Moments later, it was the post which came to Rovers' rescue. The ball wasn't properly cleared, and when it broke to Big Norrie McCarthy, his strike left Allen stranded. But the goal was merely delayed, and when Hamish French whipped the ball to the far post, Stuart Petrie was there, unmarked, to knock it over the line. Rovers hit back and only Westwater's fingertips prevented Wilson from scoring his second. A good save from the keeper. But there was nothing he could do about Rovers' second when it did come. Steve Crawford's cross finding Barry Wilson at the far post and Rovers were ahead again. Within a minute of going behind and Fairman could have equalised, Craig Robertson getting on the end of his own knockdown, but firing high and wide. The Pars continued to press for the equaliser, and only Allen's legs prevented Hamish French from scoring here. The keeper in the right spot at the right time. It was French, though, who was involved in setting up Dunfermline's equaliser. His determination to win the ball allowed Stuart Petrie to feed Paul Smith whose cross-field pass found Kenny Ward. The youngster jinked one way, then the other, before lashing the ball high past Allen. Before half-time, both teams had an opportunity to take the lead, Ali Graham heading wide when it seemed easier to score. Then Dunfermline almost managed it. Andy Todd being denied by Ray Allen's full-length stop. In the second half, Rovers' midweek cup epic seemed to catch up in them. But Ray Allen won't use that excuse for dropping Den Beeman's cross, allowing French to put the pars ahead. By now, Dunfermline were in full flow. And this move between Robertson, Redford and French displayed their growing confidence. Dunfermline's pressure finally paid off, Kenny Ward jinking away from three Wraith Rovers defenders before shooting low past Allen for his second and Dunfermline's fourth. And less than a minute later, the game was over when French played a 1-2 with Smith before unselfishly setting up Petrie. His first shot was blocked, but he reacted first to nod the ball into the net to complete a fine afternoon's work. Not a bad derby, this one. They started the game like Graham's out of a trap. These, these rovers, and I thought, good God, they're going to maul us here. But uh, we managed to wear the storm, and we, we got goals just after they got goals, so it kept us in the game. And uh, It was a, a difficult one. You didn't know which way race rovers were going to be after reaching such a high through the week. You know, It was hard to, to motivate yourself, but the big crowd must have helped. But uh, I am absolutely delighted the way we played. Well, kick-off at Hamden is fast approaching, and we can hear now from rival managers Tommy Burns and Walter Smith. They're with Jim Delahunt. Yes, welcome back to Hamden. Tommy Burns and Walter Smith with me down trackside. Tommy, you were away from this fixture for three or four years. It hasn't really changed, has it? Oh, well, I don't think it ever will change, Jim. It's uh, the be-all and end-all. Every time you play, it's the most important game for the, for the supporters and for the respective clubs, so it'll never change. Be-all and end-all, Walter? Oh, it is that way. I mean, I think, you know, when you're associated with supporters as closely as both these clubs are, and you know what it means to them um, to win the game, uh, it adds a little bit extra to the match. We were just talking beforehand about the reserve game yesterday. 14,000 at that match, the biggest crowd in Scotland. Well, I think that's a uh, good testimony to the, the supporters. I mean, they'll go and support their team no matter if it's a youth team game. Yesterday, I think they get the same crowd, Jim. And that's just what Celtic and Rangers supporters are all about. We don't want to run through your injury list, Walter, because we've only got a minute and a half, but... Uh, Two or three players have come through and you've got them in the team sheet today. Uh, Charlie Miller's been playing in the last few weeks, always a young lad, and he's been doing very well for us. And he's in on merit. People are inclined to forget that, they consider the injury list, but he's in because he's played well. And he had played well prior to the injuries we have. 
quite a lot of pre-match publicity about young Brian McGinty, whether he might get a game or not, but you've decided against that. Well, Ali McCoy uh, is fit now, he said he's, he feels OK, and I said yesterday that he would only be involved if McCoy wasn't fit. And Tommy, for you, Phil O'Donnell, he's come through and he's playing. Yeah, Phil's uh, been on the treatment table the first three or four days of the week, Jim, but the uh, last couple of days he's managed to do a wee bit of training, uh, and he's fine, he goes in from the Saturday, yeah. Most people put this down in the coupon as a draw, but uh, how's it going to go today? Well, you never like to predict a game. I mean, I've, people have said many times before that it doesn't matter which of the two teams is on top or doing well prior to the game. Uh, it's always a very tight one. Tommy, first blood to you earlier in the season, and also the reserves did your turn yesterday. Well, I think just what Walter says, Jim, it's a very, very difficult fixture to, to think about before the game and think who's going to win the game because you usually find that the team that's struggling the most is the team that's got the upper hand on the day. And I think both of us could be playing better, actually. But, uh, It'll be interesting, it'll be interesting. As long as we finish with one more than Jim, I'll be quite happy. <laughs> the players uh, talk about nerves. Do you get nervous before this? Oh, certainly. I mean, that's part and parcel of it. I think even the supporters get nervous for these games, and that's what adds to the atmosphere. And if you didn't feel that wee bit of nerves and wee bit of apprehension, you know, it wouldn't be what it was. Well, the rain's coming on. Neither of you have a jacket, so we'd better let you go back inside. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, Jim. Thanks, Thanks a lot. Oh, Paul, I mean, you've been away for some time, but it's still the be-all and end-all. You go along with that. Yeah, I mean, the sheer magnitude of the game, all the pre-match publicity, you can see then as well, both managers are owing up to it. I mean, Tommy looks like he wants to go and get stripped and get a game this afternoon. <laughs> you mentioned that more. He looks pretty fit still, doesn't he, Tommy? He certainly Burns? does. Um, he looks as if he's just ready to be on playing outside left, I think. Um, <laughs> he looks as if he's been up doing his bit, I think. Mo, it's a very big day for Alan McLaren, of course, he makes his debut right into the cauldron. Here he is warming up earlier on today. Now, you know him. How will this atmosphere get him, or will it get to him? He will handle it, no matter okay. what. Um, he's a true professional. Um, he's played for Scotland at the highest level. He's played at Hearts at the highest level. So, for me, he'll have no problems. He'll come through it. Right, How do you rate him, Mo? Oh, he's right up there amongst the best. Um, seeing Goff, he's given him a bit of praise this morning and put it in the newspapers. Um, he'll probably go on to Captain Rangers. Of course, Paul, regrettably, while you were with Celtic, you didn't manage to win a trophy. Does that still weigh heavy on you? Not really, because I think I, you know, you have to take uh, the overview. And the, and the situation was I had two fabulous years here. I played some great games. And certainly the old firm games that I played in really sort of kept it all. Probably the one that's, that really sticks in my mind is, uh, is the Skull Cup final. Mm. Where, um, and it was a fantastic... Uh, game and um, you know obviously he was very unlucky to be on the losing side. What was it like for you getting used to uh, the, the frenzy that goes on because I mean Mo, Mo grew up with it all but what was it like for you coming <laughs> coming into this sort of scene? Yeah, I mean it was very difficult I mean initially when I came here there was obviously cultural and environmental problems but you know once I settled in understood the way of life I think the the, the, the warmth and the passion amongst the, the the people in Scotland is clearly evident to be seen mm. but um, I mean I loved it it was great and I think that really sets out the men against the boys. We'll be talking more, but more. I mean, the big one. Who's going to win? Very <laughs> difficult one. I've, I've actually got the waist coat on. I think Celtic and Rangers. I think it'll be a draw. You think a draw? Yeah. Okay, Paul. I'll ask you <laughs> shortly. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're heading towards another break now. In a couple of minutes, we'll concentrate on our live match today. It is, of course, Celtic against Rangers. a quarter pounder with cheese extra value meal from McDonald's. Save an equilateral curved heptagon. This is Run Seal Quick Drying Wood Stain. You can't miss it. It comes in a tin with Run Seal Quick Drying Wood Stain on it. It protects and it's rainproof in about 30 minutes, which means in about 30 minutes your wood's rainproof and protected. So if you've got wood to stain and you want it to dry quickly, use Run Seal Quick Drying Wood Stain. It does exactly what it says on the tin. If searching around for a good deal on fuel has you feeling a bit lost, your engine may know something you don't. BP petrol and diesel costs even less than you'd expect. In fact, considering all the experience that goes into BP fuel, we think you'll find our prices very reasonable. So check out the prices at BP. It could save you a lot of running around. BP, on the move. Aptiva? Yeah, Aptiva. Their new album's kicking when you play it loud. He's ten feet long. His teeth were as sharp as razors. I had such a wild holiday in Aptiva. <gasps> How'd that one
Don get in there? Aptiva. She's the Swiss banker who cornered the zinc market. The house of Aptiva. You wouldn't catch me going up there. Aptiva. It's whatever you want. However, whenever, why ever you want it. It's the new PC. Ah, Aptiva. From IBM. I am a numismatist. I collect coins. You can save 50p when you buy a Big Mac Extra Valley meal. Then you can be a numismatist too. Are you busy, Henry? Oh, no. Here, run Sarah home for me. Do you think you have the time to spend an evening with me? And if we go someplace to dance, I know that there's a chance you won't be leaving with me. And afterwards we drop into a quiet little place and have a drink or two. What kept you? And then I go and spoil it all by saying... The Citroen Xantia. Discover what Citroen can do for you. Hey! It's a tough game! You gotta push hard! If you want to be somebody... Dedication! Commitment! That's what I want to see! You get it? You gotta train, train, train! You know what I'm saying? It's hard work and it's tasty work! Stop that! The advertising code states in Rule 39J that you cannot link macho pursuits with McEwen's Naga! Come on! Work! McEwen's Lager. Whatever it takes, we're alive and kicking. Hey, I'm telling you, the kid's going all the way. The Bosch Cordless Drill puts technology at your fingertips. It allows you to drill and screw drive effortlessly. Its battery is rechargeable up to a thousand times. And its quick-changing keyless chuck makes life even easier. Bosch. Excellence comes as standard. There are 500... 50p coins in circulation. You can save one when you buy a McChicken sandwich extra value meal from McDonald's. Derek Parley and the Rangers scorer there in the 1973 Scottish Cup final. Celtic against Rangers coming your way this afternoon. Let's now get confirmation of the teams from Jim Delahunt. Thanks Jim. Walter Smith and Tommy Burns who joined us just a couple of minutes ago gave one or two hints about the team selections. Let's get the official confirmation starting with the Celtic lineup. Gordon Marshall in goals, Barry Smith still at right back, Tom Boyd at left back, McNally and O'Neill in central defence, Phil O'Donnell, Paul Byrne, who retains his position after coming back on Wednesday night against Aberdeen. Paul McStay, Simon Donnelly and uh, Andy Walker, the twin strike force for Celtic. And of course, wearing the number 11 as usual, John Collins. Subs for Celtic today, Nicholas and Falconer with Pat Bonner, the reserve goalkeeper. On now to the Rangers lineup: Andy Gorham, Fraser Wishart coming back in at right back. David Robertson, Stuart McCall wearing number four. Alan McLaren making his debut for Rangers this afternoon, wearing the number five jersey. Basil Bolly, Peter Hoostra, of course, who's uh, available for transfer, but playing through that period. Neil Murray, Charlie Miller, Mark Hatley, and, of course, Brian Loudrop. On the bench for Rangers, David Hagen and Ali McCoy, substitute goalkeeper, Colin Scott. Thanks, Jim. Paul, now we know the teams. What are your thoughts? Interested at the two centre backs, Mark McNally. When I was there, he was playing at full back, and uh, obviously Brian O'Neill, a midfield player. Be interested in how they cope with um, Haitley up front, because obviously Haitley outstanding in the air, and obviously the supply from the wide, wide men, Hoostra and uh, Laudrop, will, will be an interesting note. Mo, some surprises there. Yeah, there's a, there's a few surprises. Um, little kid, Charlie Miller, coming in. Obviously, Walter saying he's in there on merit. Hope he does well. Um, but as uh, Paul said, I think it's going to be the key The key element in the game will be the boy Boyd with um, Loudrop. Now you know the sides, are you any further forward to giving us a, a prediction? I still think it will be a draw. <laughs> you're still <laughs> sitting on the fence. <laughs> that's, a, that's a surprise, Mo. You're <laughs> going to be okay, you're going to be oh. what, what do you think, Paul? I mean, now you know the two lineups. You know the way they'll probably play or shape up against each other. What, mm. what would your thoughts be? It's going to be hard for Celtic today, I think. But the, I think the beauty of the old firm game is previous form counts for nothing. Mm. So I'll, 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 I might go with Mo.
This is the nearest I've got to imagine. In the usual old film games, I'm around chasing <laughs> for 90 minutes. So it's not as bad. I'm going for a score draw. <laughs> How exciting. <Yeah. laughs> How exciting. OK. Well, for Celtic, a summer of drama saw Lou Macari sacked as manager and replaced by Tommy Burns. At board level, the new regime under Fergus McCann is firmly ensconced. But the old familiar tale of financial troubles at Celtic is still to the fore. Celtic started the season with a new management team. Tommy Burns was back at the club, this time as a man in charge, with Billy Stark as his assistant. There was only one new face, though, in the playing ranks. Andy Walker had returned from Bolton, and he made an immediate impact, scoring the goal against Falkirk, which earned Celtic their first league point of the season. Before the month of August was out, Celtic fans were convinced the good times were back. Goals by John Collins and Paul McStay gave the side victory in the first Old Firm clash of the season at Ibrox. Not only were Celtic winning, they were spending money. Fergus McCann gave Tommy Burns £1.75 million to buy Phil O'Donnell from Motherwell. The midfielder didn't waste any time in repaying his fee, hitting a double on his debut against Partick Thistle to put Celtic top of the Premier table. The players seem to be enjoying their temporary move to Hamden. In their match against Hibs there on September the 24th, they produced one of the goals of the season. Made off by Collins to Nicholas. Good play. Peter Grant gets a touch as Collins. It's a magnificent goal by Celtic. But it wasn't all going Celtic's way. The Scottish League hit them with a £100,000 fine for the illegal tapping of Burns from Kilmarnock. Lou McCarry was after a slice of compensation after his sacking. And despite denials, there was a strain on the relationship between Burns and McCann because cash wasn't being made available to strengthen the squad. The team suffered a dip in fortunes too. Draws with Motherwell and Aberdeen were followed by a defeat by Hearts. It's laid off now to Tosh McKinley. Jim Bett drives it through. And John Robertson sends the ball beyond Marshall. But Celtic were given the perfect tonic for today's match. Brian O'Neill heading them into a Coca-Cola Cup final against Wraith Rovers. Rangers are going through something of a transitional period, but they remain favourites to retain the title. The need for change at Ibrox was sparked by failure on a higher level. Rangers' summer spending spree was £5.5 million pounds on Messrs Bolly and Loudrup. But even before the domestic campaign was underway, a setback. The 2-0 European Cup defeat in Athens put their coveted place in the Champions League in peril. Saravakos, the scourge of the Scottish champions in the heat of Athens. Back at home, Rangers made their now traditional start to the league season with a home win, this time over Motherwell. The winner fashioned by the Great Dane. Running by a low drop. There could be something on here. Duncan Ferguson stays left. Days later, another full house at Ibrox. Can Rangers qualify for the Champions League? Athens are two up. This is Chartas. And that's into the net by Savevsky. 42 minutes gone, and that could signal the end for Rangers. And then Basil Bolly in the newspapers, criticising his colleagues for the Ibrox set-up in a French magazine. It was sorted out, though, by Walter Smith. Then a defeat by Celtic at Ibrox. The summer of 94 closed with Rangers' Coca-Cola cup hopes fading quicker than their tans. Falkirk turning them over at Ibrox. Chance to atone though in the league in September. Bully is well forward, using his strength, trying to get through. And Basil Bully scores! Another good win as well against Hearts in the live game in September. Into October and a good start for Rangers at Easter Road. Basil Bolly again the scorer for the champions. But then disaster struck for them. Hibbs equalising through Gordon Hunter. And Hibbs continued their challenge for the championship, getting the winner. Kevin Harper rising unchallenged to make it 2-1 to the Edinburgh sides. Two players then departing meantime, Ian Durant and Duncan Ferguson off to Everton, bottom of the Premiership. Rangers, though, looking to stay at the top. They go to Fair Park to play Motherwell. And Dougie Arnott strikes for Motherwell to put them one up. And then the smallest man in the park makes it two. The champions trailing by two goals from Arnott last Saturday afternoon. 
A late consolation made by who else? Brian Loudrup carving this one out and turned into his net by John Philibin. And so to this afternoon, and Rangers have a new face in their lineup, Alan McLaren. They've wanted him for weeks. They signed him during the week from Hearts as Dave McPherson went as part of the £1.75 million pound transfer. Well, Paul, as you can see from both these reports, there have been interesting developments both at Celtic and at Rangers in recent months. Yes, I mean, uh, I think at Celtic there's a much more stability in the club, Jim. I think the supporters, as much as success they want, they realise it's not going to come overnight. I think uh, in Tommy Burns I've got an outstanding manager and I'm sure obviously in Fergus McCann they've got the business brain behind it to obviously you know, bring back the success. As far as Rangers are concerned, obviously the defeat against AEK Athens in Europe has put a big dent in their throne, but um, I still think they will be there or thereabouts. But I think what's pleasing, Jim, in general for the Scottish game is obviously the emergence of, uh, of Hibs and Motherwell. Mm. I mean, Celtic or Rangers were talking about them, they've got no divine right to be there mm. unless they justify that, and I think that's great for the Scottish game. Paul is right, more they have no divine right to be there. I don't think any team have got the divine right to be at the top and um, mm. you can see our club as well that they've won four out of six now and we're up there um, the way things are going at the Scottish game at the moment with three three points for a victory it gets you up there if you go on a run of course but of course it's still such a major fixture and we're covering it live in a few minutes well one man with an important part to play in today's proceedings is Brian Loudrop of Rangers and he's now at Hamden talking to Jim Dillon back to Hamden Tommy Burns will now present the Bells player of the month award to Brian Loudrop yeah, great pleasure well done, well done, young man. Well done. Cheers. Well done. Thanks very much, Tommy. Cheers, Brian, well done. Man, uh, player of the month. You've had a great time since you started here at Rangers. Yeah, I'm enjoying myself right now and uh, I'm very pleased about and very honoured about this award. What about this atmosphere here this afternoon? It's absolutely great. I'm looking forward to this game. You've played in an old firm match already. How, how did you find it? Um, apart from the result, very good. It was a fantastic experience, a, a fantastic atmosphere. But uh, I hope the result will be a little bit more positive. Thank today. you very much, Brian. Well done. Now, as far as Ladbrokes are concerned, they go 13-8 to eight on either side winning this afternoon with 15-8 to eight the draw, as predicted by Paul and Mo. And time is running out. If you want to have a go in our first goal scorer competition, the number to ring is 0839 There's a reminder of the prices on offer today. Mark Hately, the 92 favourite, Andy Walker at 6-1. to one. Then that clutch of five players on 8-1. to one. John Collins is 10-1, to one. Charlie Miller 12s and 14s. Phil O'Donnell. Let's now hand over to our commentary team, summariser Alan McAnally and commentator Jerry McNee and look out during the match coverage for Super Slow Mo, a facility supplied by Bells, the lead championship sponsors. Welcome everyone to the National Stadium for the latest instalment in a battle which stretches back 106 years and no doubt will go on for some time to come. Well, Hamden Park's capacity bygone days was uh, around the 134,000 mark today it's around 34,000 but uh, if 100,000 people are missing you would hardly notice on a day such as this now the Rangers fans there just uh, 4,000 tickets allocated to them this afternoon but they're making the presence felt and alongside me the man who's taken part in these occasions Alan McAnally yes thanks Jerry Still trying to get used to actually seeing a game, Celtic and Rangers, in a league game at Hampden Park. Uh, both teams will be unbelievably greeted, I'm sure, by their normal colours and frenzy that they'll get. I think they'll, they'll, Celtic will almost certainly play a normal 4-4-2 formation. I think you'll see Simon Donnelly dropping back into midfield, as they probably will Charlie Miller do the same for Rangers. Well, let's have a look at that Celtic lineup, Alan. And, uh, as you say, a back four of uh, Smith, O'Neill, McNally and Boyd. And uh, no real surprises in the way they will line up. No, no, I don't... I mean, I'd be very surprised if, if Tommy had made any real changes to his back four after their, their great result in midweek. Um, I think he's obviously very pleased with Brian O'Neill, not only that getting the goal, but he did pick up a badge injury against Aberdeen and the fact that he's fit again is a real plus for him with the, the amount of, of injuries that actually both teams do have. Um, the only real change is, is that Peter Grant is uh, is out and Phil O'Donnell just comes in for him uh, but I, I think you know you can you can forget about form and individual the way players individual are playing this game is a one-off it always is a one-off and the team who want to win this game the most they will come out on top and the Rangers line up of course uh, Alan McLaren coming in alongside Basil Bolly it'll be interesting to see how that works yeah I'm interested to see if he's, if he's learned any French in the week 
Uh, I don't. I mean, I don't uh, foresee any problems for Alan McLaren in a game of of this nature. He's he's played in big games before. He'll know just exactly what it's about. And um, and obviously the uh, introduction of Fraser Wisher just shows you the kind of the, the real problems that they have. And uh, back to you, Jerry, as the teams come out. So here come the teams led by referee Bill Crombie to a tremendous ovation. Without uh, players like Richard Goff, John Brown, Trevor Stephen, Alexa Mikhailichenko, and Ali McCoy is on the bench. But these Rangers fans will get right behind the side, they'll get 100%. And Alan, what a talented Celtic midfield that is. When you look at Phil O'Donnell, who was cup tied during the week coming in this afternoon, some real quality in there. Very, very talented. I think Tommy's obviously basing his, well, with his inclusion of buying Phil O'Donnell for 1.75 million. But really, personally, I thought, you know, they, you know they, they have had problems in scoring goals and they have had problems in defence. He thinks the key to midfield is for Celtic and, you know, they, they have a, an abundance of talent there. And I'm sure that's exactly where he'll want everything to come from today. And there is Alan McLaren. What a huge day in his career. He's been playing Premier League football since the age of 17, so he certainly knows what it's all about. That's uh, an old firm game, just... A little bit different, but he's looking quite calm and composed. And of course, the width uh, provided this afternoon as well by Haustra and Laudra. Yeah, I think I don't expect. I would imagine that Brian possibly will start on the left, Haustra on the right. But regardless where they start, I'm almost sure that's not where they'll end up. I'm sure they'll be swapping positions at all the time. I'm sure that Walter Smith has given Brian Laudra almost a free roll behind Mark Hately to support him whenever he can. And that's exactly how I think they're both seeing. They've been wanting a lot from him today. Rangers really do tick when Brian's on form. And Peter Hauser, a player of tremendous quality, although a lot of speculation about him leaving Rangers. And he'll be wanting to show just exactly what he can do today. But there's the referee, Bill Crombie, from it. But a highly experienced official. It is quite surprising that this is his first old for a match. But uh, an excellent referee, and I'm sure he'll keep a very close control of things. So it will be Celtic to kick off amid this bedlam here at Hamden Park. It's the League Cup finalists against the reigning champions. So away we go for the second goal for a match of the season. And immediately it's Laudrup trying to get forward, but away by McNally. No header there, first touch for McLaren, through to McCall. McCall will be very important to Rangers this afternoon, that's a good ball. And Laudrup blocked there by McNally, so a corner after just 20 seconds. Yeah, I think Rangers obviously well keyed up for this, a great start by then. Celtic started this by giving the ball away immediately from the centre, and Tommy won't be happy with that, I'm sure. And already it's resulted in a corner for Rangers. Celtic will have to be on their toes here. Bolly has moved forward, Hitley's here as well with a header, and it's off the line by Collins. A tremendous start by Rangers, and it's Collins in there battling away again with Laudrup. That's exactly what I said, Jerry. Mark Hitley almost going from there, great ball in. Mark getting up, one in the header. That's why John Collins is on the line to do his job for his goalkeeper and clear the danger. Free kick awarded to Celtic. Basil Bolly there with Simon Donnelly. McLaren has picked up Walker. Play through by Smith. A touch by Walker on towards Donnelly. So Peter Hauser down there. On the left-hand side of the field at the moment, uh, Laudrup just inside him. And these two will take a bit of watching this afternoon. Laudrup will have a bit of a free roll. 
I think that exactly what he's going to do. And although Brian will still try and support Marcus as much as he can, as much as he can, I think Rangers are going to attempt just to have more often than not an extra man in midfield and try and get a grip of it and win the game. The young Charlie Miller dropping deep as he tends to do. But there's a good ball played through now, looking for Donnelly. Bullies with him. The goalkeeper's committed himself right out of the area. There, got him. Celtic have the throw. did the right thing there. Get the ball away. You can talk about it after. As long as the ball doesn't land in your own net, that's OK. That's left by Walker. Donnelly to Walker again. Bully's in there. And it's Robertson who clears. So Rangers making a tremendous opening, but Celtic now battling back. Smith driving it through and blocked by Robertson. Donnelly, Bollies with him. This is McLaren. Again at Celtic's throw. McLaren looking busy and uh, afraid to give his opinions there. Still at Celtic though. That's Walker trying the shot. And uh, well taken in the end by Andy Gorham. The snapshot from Andy Walker. Good first shot by Andy Walker. First shot on target today. Andy knows it goes maybe few and far between. Tied his lock. Unfortunately for him, Andy was well behind it. Was header, but the flag had gone up on the far side. Slight the decision. Free kick to Celtic. Well, Rangers hold the upper hand in league meetings. Today, the 234th meeting between the clubs. Rangers have won 91, Celtic 73, and 69 have been drawn. Certainly, Celtic have had scoring problems in the month of October. Four games there in the regulation 90 minutes without scoring a goal, so that will be a matter of some concern to Tommy Burns. I don't think there's any doubt about that. But on the other hand, Ranger defensively not doing so well lately, and losing uh, two goals in uh, four of the last eight matches, which is very unusual for them. And this is Fraser Wishart, who's come back into the side this afternoon because of all of the injuries. It's Away by Celtic, picked up there by McLaren. Wishart's in there again. And it's John Collins going across to concede the throw in. And Collins very busy in these early stages also. The goal line clearance. And uh, doing some good defensive work. It's him, as ever towards Hitley. Celtic's ball. So five minutes gone here at Hamden Park. Celtic nil, Rangers nil. Plenty of action in these early stages, and here comes Loudrop again. In tremendous pace. But, uh, Tom Boyd digs in well. So now looking for Donnelly. That's a good solid challenge by McLaren. So he's made a good start to the match. Bully's in there. Murray, McCall, getting no time at all. McLaren plays it across to Robertson. Houser is just ahead of him. And that drifts out for the throw. I'm sure Jerry, if any players, which I'm sure they did have any nails before the game, but this time everything's forgotten. They're well into their stride now, trying to get a feel of the ball, play a few passes together, and concentrating on the job ahead. scoring hero of the other evening, providing the pass back. Also gets up and <laughs> it's picked up by Collins. Well, the linesman signalling and a uh, free kick uh, has been awarded to Celtic. These are Wishart, the culprit. It's quickly taken. Out towards Burn. This is Walker. Uh, Miss hitting that one, sending it behind Barry Smith. Tommy just out the, bo out the box here, out the dugout, trying to tell Andy Walker to get a hold of it and don't be in such a hurry to play the ball away and give it away like that. But well, Barry Smith could have held his run a little bit there and helped Andy. This is Houston. 
Lovely through by Miller to Hitley. Robertson, Houstra. Quickly closed down by McStay, now it's Byrne. Calls in there for Rangers. So too is Loudrup. Good play by Loudrup. But uh, no real support to uh, trying to push the ball through towards Murray there, but Celtic have it again. It's Collins, McStay. O'Neill to McNally. Barry Smith. Simon Donnelly running about just ahead of him, but uh, Celtic have to settle for the throw in. Smith, Claren watches it carefully and behind it goes for the goal kick. Yeah, good opening by both teams. I think it's not one team going to be going to absolutely dominate the game, that's for sure. Celtic will spells, Rangers will spells. It's just when you've got that ball and, and you're on top that little bit, it's when you have to make it pay and try and get on the score sheet. Safely winning that one. It's Murray. Hatley's running on the left. He's running by Hatley. Down he goes. The referee doesn't react. And he awards a goal kick. But well, certainly excellent running by the Rangers striker. I must admit, Jerry, my first reaction was it was definitely a penalty. And you've seen it in the replay. I think Mark Hatley's got every right to, to think he could have been given one. The referee was certainly well positioned. Gave a decision. Maybe see it better from here. Mark certainly does get in ahead of him. And Barry Smith certainly comes in late. And for me, that's a penalty for Rangers. A break for Celtic. In possession through O'Neill. And behind for the goal kick. Well, that'll be a real talking point. I don't think there's any doubt. But uh, Hitley, uh, defeat taken from him. Well, these uh, sides uh, have met twice before on this very date, October the 30th. And Celtic have won on both occasions and very late in the game. This is McCall. Loudrop. A good open game so far. Both sides really having a go. That's Celtic. It's Donnelly. This is O'Donnell. Burns running wide. And, uh, Robertson getting in there, taking absolutely no chance against Burn. Well, Paul Burn had uh, a superb match against Rangers at Ibrox in the League Cup last season, even though Celtic uh, lost that night. And uh, he's lost a bit of weight, and uh, Tommy Burns has been pleased with him in training of late. So interesting to see how he performs this afternoon. Yeah, I was speaking to Paul before the game, Jerry, and he's you know well pleased he's back in the we're certainly in Celtic's plans, if nothing else. And he'll be relishing this today, I'm sure. That's a long one played by McNally, looking for Collins. Wishart gets a touch. Then Murray's caught in possession. Battle going on out there in the edge of the penalty area. And uh, Neil Murray does well, he gets it away. Quickly caught there by McNally. The free kick is awarded. It's quickly taken. Nice play between the Dutchman and the Dane. Back through towards Loudrop. Again showing tremendous pace this time on the left. Italy covering a lot of ground. This is Wishart. Italy. Neil Murray to McCall. Back out towards Loudrup. And try to thread it through to Houstra. Still he has it though. So that brings a huge cheer from the Rangers fans and enjoying the skills of Loudrup. Yeah, Phil Marcy Paul Burnley he wasn't deceived by Brian thinking he was going to cross it and try and dig it through to Peter Houstra and blocked his path there. Although Rangers still in the ascendancy here with a throw in defence Celtics have. So it's Robertson who is a bit of a long throw specialist. Aimed in towards Hatley. 
Hauser gets a touch. Well, almost an opening for Miller. There could be one for McCall. Well, Stuart McCall. The opening for him there. Just the one goal this season. And uh, there was an opportunity there. He certainly was a little wry smile on his face. You just saw there. He knows he should have done better. Great scoring position for him. Didn't hit the target. You ain't going to score. So that's Rangers ball. Charlie Miller. Caught though by O'Donnell. Sending it through. Donnelly showing great pace, but Bully with him all the way. And he concedes the corner kick. Well, this looks like being an interesting tussle between the young Celtic player and the highly experienced man from Marseille. Signed recently for two and a half million pounds. That ball into the side netting and behind for the goal kick. Well, it's amazing to think uh, this time last year Simon Donnelly was watching old firm matches from the terracing. And, uh, of course, he played in the game at Ibrook Stars end of last season. He footed himself very well indeed. There's Loudrup losing out to McStay. A lot of doubts over McStay's fitness, but uh, as the captain, he's desperate to take part in this match this afternoon. And good play by McStay. Good ball through to Walker. The chance on here behind for the goal kick. Superb play by Paul McStay and creating the opening. Does really well, Paul, here. Looks for the one two. You can see him waiting to try and get it. Simon Donnelly gives him that option. Simon just directs the ball. Great ball through from Paul. Although instinctively Andy Walker wants to shoot and score. He had options inside him. He just didn't make a good enough connection. requires some treatment after taking a knock. So the big Celtic support here in full cry. But uh, happily for Rangers, Robertson has recovered. Very important player to them with his pace. This is Boyd. Collins. Comes Byrne at the far side, but uh, well headed down by Robertson. McCall plays it now to Haustra. Loudrup. Well, they hit that one early, looking for Hitley, but uh, a bit of a misunderstanding between two highly experienced campaigners and Celtic. Our possession again, it's Boyd floating the long one through. Picked up by Walker, Bully's with him. Good challenge by the Rangers defender. Forward now to Murray. This is Bully. Loudrup. Holding off the challenge of O'Neill. Slipped by Haustra, but he recovers well. Steps away from Byrne. This is Charlie Miller. Wishart's wide. This is Fraser Wishart. That's deflected into the path of Paul McStay. Looks around for options. It's played shot to Collins. Long one now for Donnelly to chase. McLaren's with him. And an no-nonsense challenge from the Rangers defender. In these conditions, wet conditions, defenders can't take any chances at all. And uh, both uh, Bolly and McLaren so far have been very positive indeed. But here comes Celtic through Tom Boyd. Goes down there by Wishart. A little touch by Hatley to Charlie Miller. Miller taken out of the play by O'Donnell. Free kick awarded by Mr. Crombie, who is calling over the Celtic player. Charlie was always ahead of him there. Phil's you know, chasing and chasing and chasing, but it is from the back, and they certainly catch him. Charlie just nicking the ball away from him. Didn't get booked for it, Phil, but he'll have to be careful. McLaren plays it through off the head of Boyd, but uh, McNally's there to provide the cover. So McLaren taking charge of that situation with Ian Bowley were moving towards the ball, but again, a very positive 
touch from the Rangers defender. This is Murray. Murray battling well. And he feels he's got uh, something to prove. He was almost on his way to Hearts recently. He does extremely well there. Gets it through to Loudrop. Marshall's at full stretch. And the Celtic goalkeeper does really well. Hadley was coming in by him, so too was Charlie Miller. We should have got Marshall hadn't taken that. It was going to be a goal for Rangers. Neil Murray does superb. Brian Loudrop, attacking defender. He's one of the best in the world at this. Tom Boy can't do anything about it. It's a great cross. Big Gordon Marshall takes it clean enough for Celtic. So that ball coming off. Andy Walker for the throw to Rangers. Celtic defenders crowding in and Hitler there. And now it's Collins who has it. Survives that challenge from Stuart McCall. Plays it to Boyd. Boyd going outside of Wishart, but uh, as well the defender. This is Murray. Given away though to McStay. Through for Donnelly. Good play by Donnelly. To McStay, but uh, complete miss hit by the Celtic midfielder. Maybe. Disappointed with that. Well, they played uh, the other evening. And it was sad. He was only about 60% fit, so he might be struggling still quite a bit. But uh, with Peter Grant out this afternoon, uh, he would certainly want to take part. It's a deal playing it through. But stay in the thick of the action again, finding Collins. Defenders looking at one another angrily. Simon Donnelly with a glancing header. Good ball in from John Collins. Simon Donnelly's the only one that reacts, just doesn't get enough on his header. For sure, if he can just make good contact there, that was almost inevitably going to be Celtic's goal, first goal this afternoon. Andy Gorham was not at all happy with his defenders there, and he let them know it. But here come Rangers, it's Miller. Ball breaks through now to Peter Haustra. Loudrup's calling for it. So let's Haustra. Well, Loudrup uh, went in a nice little run there and he was calling for the ball. But uh, Haustra saw a little opening as well and went for it. Here he is again. Let's play through to Miller. First touch letting him down though. Lovely skills by McStay to O'Donnell. So 20 minutes gone here. Still no scoring, but uh, plenty of action. Both sides having a real goal, but to the offside flag goes up against Danny Walker. Just on that last movement from Peter Hauser, Jerry. Very similar players, him and Brian Loud up. They love to run with the ball. Although you're getting Andy Began offside here. You can see Alan McClellan just comes up, does enough, has a look over. Perhaps a little bit lucky that Vazaboli had come out with him. And he'll be trying to get in the back of Rangers all day today, but not on that occasion. So White's header, it's picked up by Phil O'Donnell, making his firm debut this afternoon. And it's John Collins, who's uh, given Rangers a very hard time indeed in recent seasons. The crossfield pass to Byrne. Byrne trying the shot. It's, uh, well wide of target. No way, just a little bit of blood streaming from his eyes. I said I was speaking to him earlier on. He picked it up midweek. There was no way anything like that was going to stop him complaining today. Nally climbing a bit on Hayfley indicates the referee. Nally doesn't necessarily agree, but a free kick it is to Rangers. Farron plays it short to Robertson. This is Loudrop. McCall playing it through, looking for Loudrop again. It looks just a bit ambitious, but uh, Loudrop almost getting to it. Brian trying a little back heel, trying to play it off Barry Smith for the corner. A little bit unlucky, it never came off. Well, 
played through by O'Neill, but the offside flag has gone up. The referee hasn't spotted it. And Gorham had to make the save. Well, the linesman, and as the flag raised, still Mr. Crombie hasn't uh, spotted it. So a play will go on. Mr. Crombie never looked at all at the linesman there, which is a little surprising. Although it eventually came to nothing anyway, but had it been, I'm sure there'd have been a few words to be said by Walter Smith. This is Loudrop. Good skills again by Loudrop. A delightful cross, a chance on for Murray. And it's swept away by O'Neill. Well, perhaps a classic case of the chance falling to the wrong player. He wanted a striker in the end of that one, someone like. Ali McCoy, who's down there on the bench, what a glorious chance, what a great cross it was by Loudrop. Great cross by Brian Hill, it's wing player at its best, deep cross, Mark's brought everybody to the near post. To be fair, I would normally protect most players, being a player myself, and Neil Murray knows he really should have scored there, striker or not. He had an open goal, and all he has to do is slide the ball into the net, and never made good contact with the ball at all. Free kick awarded to Rangers. Taken by Bolly to McCall. This is Robertson. Through for Haustra. McNally comes to meet him. That's out for the throw. Well, Mark McNally, who's uh, still to settle his future with Celtic and short term contracts at the moment. Can't reach agreement with them, but that'll be the last thing in his mind at this particular moment. So Robertson again. With the long throw in towards Hatley. This is Loudrop. Oh, nice play there by Wishart. And trying the shot as well, he had the confidence to go on with it. That was a delightful play from the fullback. Nice to see Fraser Wishart involved in a game like that. He hasn't played a great deal for Rangers this season. Great body swerve round there. The shot never came to anything, that never really troubled Gordon Marshall. So Collins sweeping it across towards Byrne. Takes it down well. This is Barry Smith. Donnelly's calling for it. This is Simon Donnelly. And calls with him. He hits the early cross. And swept away by Murray. The header from Robertson. Lodrup's closed down by McNally. And he wins the throw in. You get the impression that uh, Loudrop has done so much in this first half that really Rangers should have taken something from it. But still no scoring here at the National Stadium in this Premier Division match. Little touch from Hitley. It's picked up by Boyd. It's caught by Charlie Miller. Through now for Hitley! Oh, that is a magnificent goal! 25 minutes gone, terrific play by young Charlie Miller, winning the ball, sliding it through to Hatley, and what a tremendous finish, look at Miller there, digging in well against Tom Boyd, looking up, looking around, sliding the ball through to Hatley, and what a finish by the big striker, Mark Hatley gets his ninth goal of the season. Well, we're talking about Simon Gormley being involved. For Celtic, but Charlie Miller, brilliant here, wins the ball from Tom Boyd. But the little pass inside is almost as good as his goal because it sets up Mark superbly. And the big man buries it. Absolutely brilliant. 1 0 to Rangers. It's a great goal. Walter Smith, will be a happy man now. He's down there on the track side. Here's Miller again, battling hard. Well, can Celtic respond? Teams tend to be vulnerable just after they've scored. Walter Smith will want things calmed down, and that was the chance of the equaliser. Phil O'Donnell, just on the six-yard line, diving in. It almost happened, Jerry. Great ball in from Paul Brown to the back post. O'Donnell almost on to the end. I don't think you see him score a great deal of goals in his head. He certainly wasn't that far away there.
Charlie Miller. Well, they're very proud man indeed, but uh, he'll know. As all the rest out there, there's still a long way to go in this match. Martin Ox just below us, telling his players to keep things calm. As Hitler gets the touch forward. This is O'Neill. Comes off the head of Robertson into the path of Simon Donnelly, who's looked very lively indeed. It's laid off by Collins to McStay. Tom Boyd, who lost out to Miller at that goal. He'll feel he's got uh, something to pay back here. Celtic have the free kick just outside the penalty area, the Rangers penalty area. So O'Neill moves forward. The glancing header the other evening at Ibrox in the League Cup semi final. Sedano trying the shot, but uh, it's weak and never a problem. But there might be a problem for him. He's limping quite a bit, and uh, his fitness was in some question this week. He's been receiving treatment, so simply we're hoping that uh, he can continue. And his defence there, Jerry, the ball seemed to die for him there, never seemed to bounce up so he could volley it. At Andy Gorham's goal, instead of that, rather splaffed at it. And didn't really trouble Andy at all. It's well cut out by McLaren. A little downward header there from Miller, which was a good one. Picked up by McStay. And that's a free kick to Celtic. Barry Smith clipping it through, but what a wasted opportunity there. And then he loses out now to Loudrop. Loudrop is showing dazzling skills this afternoon. And this is Wishart, who's also having a fine game. Just playing with a lot of confidence here. This is Haustra, looking for Haitley. And it's behind for the goal kick. The Rangers certainly carrying a big goal threat, and uh, Loudrop and Haustra doing an awful lot of work here and teeing things up for Hitley. Intelligent ball from Houser there, Celtic were really stretched at the back there, you saw Tommy Boyd was actually only getting back into the box as Big Mark attempted to header towards goal. They'll have to defend a lot better than that Celtic if they want to keep Rangers to just one this afternoon. This is Barry Smith or Celtic, so overheading that one. And Tommy Burns plenty on his mind. He has uh, Charlie Nicholas and Holy Faulkner on the bench this afternoon. I imagine he's contemplating any change just yet, but uh, certainly Rangers have the upper hand, leading by one goal to nil. And playing with a lot of style and confidence. So that's half an hour gone in this match. Mark Keatley's goal, the difference between the sides. Can Celtic respond? Here comes McStay, he's blocked by McLaren, still McStay battling away, breaks to O'Donnell. This is Byrne, flipping in the ball, but an easy one in the end for Andy Gorham. And Celtic will have to show some more imagination, they'll have to get in behind the Rangers defence, start getting in some quality crosses. It's a volley with Donnelly. And a free kick awarded against the Rangers defender. Did very well there, Simon Donnelly. Protected the ball at all costs. Didn't let Basil Bolly come through him. And because of that, Basil had to foul Simon. Good play by him. Well, Donnelly certainly gave Richard Goff a difficult game towards the end of last season. And uh, Basil Bolly will have to be in top form this afternoon. That was a challenge that time on Walker. It's away by Fraser Wishart. Well, the Rangers fans will be well pleased with what they've seen so far this afternoon. And uh, although this is uh, termed a home game uh, for Celtic uh, here at Hamden Park, home advantage really tends to matter not a lot in old for a matches. In fact, if you look back to last season, Rangers took three points from Celtic Park, and uh, Celtic then went to Ibrox and took three of their four points. Uh, there, so it doesn't matter an awful lot. McLaren climbing above Don Lane, that's McCall. 
Cullen steps in for Celtic. This is O'Neill to Boyd. Down the line for Walker to chase, but uh, Bolly's there. And again, Bolly taking no chance, sliding the ball out of play. Here comes Celtic again, it's Boyd. Sending in the cross. Robertson dealt with that one comfortably, but it's picked up by McStay. McStay trying to drive Celtic forward here. McLaren's with him all the way. And the linesman signals that there's handball by Paul McStay. And uh, the free kick is awarded. <laughs> certainly an almighty touch with there, yeah. Paul possibly did touch it with the hand, but certainly with no intent. the determination of both players to win that ball and that's uh, McLaren again certainly has fitted in very well Al McLaren ok there's only 35 minutes played so far it is a big game he shouldn't have any problems getting himself up for it but certainly hasn't looked out of place in the Rangers team today at all and then they got him letting that one slide away from his grasp and uh, got him complaining that uh, Andy Walker the ball behind, but the corner kick has been awarded. So I think Celtic get something back here. It's Collins who delivers across, headed away by McLaren, turned by O'Donnell. This is Andy Walker, picked up now by McCall. David Robertson does some good running ahead of him, switching over to the right hand side. This is Murray, Murray pushing it just too far in front, but getting away with it. Flipping it through now, looking for Houstra, it's cut out by McNally, this is Boyd. O'Neill, Walker, good ball towards Burn. It's headed away by Charlie Miller, cut now by Barry Smith. It's caught by Loudrop. Catley through the middle. Loudrop through for Hatley. Great ball. Still it's Hatley. Well, again, magnificent play by Loudrop. He looked around, he didn't have an awful lot there in terms of options. And then he slid the ball through towards Hatley. I think Jerry H uh, Mark Hatley knew exactly what Brian Loudrop was going to do there. He knew he was going to come inside and slip the little ball through to him because Mark was already on his way. But the angle was just a little bit too tight for him to beat Big Gordon. But again, Brian Lodgett so dangerous when he's attacking play, uh, attacking defenders. They just do not like it. And like I said, he is really one of the best in the world at it. Well, Celtic had the three defenders to two attackers there, but still he managed to cause him a problem. And while this is Peter Haustra, good crossfield pass. This is Fraser Wishart. McCall's well forward and calling for it. It's played short though to Murray. Here's McCall now. Trying to turn but losing out to Brian O'Neill. Nice little turn by the Celtic defender. This is Murray. Dolly plays it through. There's a wish it. He's come into this Rangers team this afternoon and uh, you would imagine they've been playing all season, such as his confidence. There's Loudrup popping up now on the right-hand side, twisting and turning, drawing defenders towards him. Any young player watching the game today, I know I'm harping on about Brian, <laughs> and I know him well, and I've been into trouble for, for saying too much about him, but this is what we pay money to pay for. We say we don't see enough quality. We see more than enough with Brian Loudrup. Rangers leading Celtic by one goal to nil. Hatley the scorer after 25 minutes. Gordon Marshall in a hurry to get on with things. Celtic's passing a bit slack. It's Robertson going for that one with Byrne. Miller losing up though to McStay. McLaren has plenty of time. And Gorham launches that one way up towards the halfway line. It's returned by McNally. The offside flag is up. But it wasn't against Simon Donnelly. And Paul Byrne was a bit slow in getting back onside. And the flag went up against him as the ball was played through to Simon Donnelly. Yeah, Paul definitely offside there. 
a run forward trying to cut off Andy Gorham playing the ball long and just didn't get back on side in time this is Haitley picked up by Barry Smith sloppy pass by him Wishart gets a touch this is Byrne for Celtic and the high ball played by Robertson I remember he managed to fire one into this gantry a few years ago, Alan. <laughs> it was the first thing that came out of my mind there when the ball was coming through the air, Jerry. Although it's probably as close as I'll get to the ball today, unfortunately. And a free kick awarded to Celtic. Robertson, the offender. So to move towards half time. Celtic will really have to step up the pace a bit. Uh, O'Neill a bit unhappy about the challenge by Miller. And the referee is calling over the young Rangers player. I think the referee just making a little bit of a piece in here. He doesn't want things to get out of hand. Things haven't been like that. A little shake of the hands. Let's go on with the job. He, he possibly just did catch him a little bit there, Brian. Brian a little bit unhappy with him, but no real great malice in the tackle. So it's O'Neill who delivers the ball. It's headed on by McNally, away by McLaren. This is McStay. And again, disappointment for Celtic. And uh, Byrne failing to control that one, although it was hit with uh, well, a bit of pace by Paul McStay. The surface is a bit wet today. It's, it's not easy down there. McNally does well. This is Byrne. away well the Rangers defenders certainly have not been messing about this afternoon they're playing the simple ball and getting it away from the danger area this is Boyd for Celtic to Collins Celtic hoping maybe they can get themselves a free kick just outside the box and let uh, Collins in that but here's Boyd coming forward defenders the wrong way and the wrong side of them Paul Byrne hanging at the back post and curls an unstoppable shot past Andy Gorham you can see here it's not a good cross Paul actually has to step back onto his left foot and it's a great strike from him and gets Celtic straight back into the game and a brilliant time to score Celtic one Rangers one just under five minutes of this first half left a dramatic afternoon this is becoming Paul Byrne who just a few moments earlier was looking disappointed a couple of his touches letting him down and then he strikes at them past Andy Gorham giving the goalkeeper no chance so Tommy Burns a happier man now I think Tommy will be very very happy he knows Celtic haven't been particularly dominant in this first half have maybe got out of jail a couple of times and if they go in 1-1 one, one at half time I'm sure he'll be the happier of the two managers Turn of the Celtic Legions to celebrate. So just under four minutes of the first half left. Now that uh, goal should do a lot for Celtic's confidence. There was a danger they could fall out of this game. I don't think there's any doubt that uh, Rangers have been the better side, had the better chances, but uh, Celtic hanging on in there. And in an old firm atmosphere, anything can happen. And uh, Burton taking a sore one there, and as he went into that challenge. So 50 50, David Robinson still going very hard. And I think Paul taking a, a little knock in the inside of his knee on the medial ligament, just from David Robertson there. Certainly fully committed to the tackle, David Robertson there. So let's hope for Byrne and 
Celtic's point of view that this is not too serious. They'll want to keep him in the field now after his excellent equaliser. Certainly a strong challenge going in from the Rangers fullback. You see the determination in David Robertson's face here. Certainly does catch him actually with his right knee. On to Paul Bunsley, I'm sure he'll be all right. Scotty will have the, the magic vodka and the magic sponge. So Byrne back on his feet and uh, the match restarts with the throw by Robertson. Hitley gets a touch. Down goes uh, Peter Haustra. Challenge there from O'Donnell. Free kick to Rangers, quickly taken. Played shot by McCall to Loudrop. Good ball through again for Robertson. It's Hitley! Oh, tremendous play by Rangers. What a stunning ball through by Loudrop to Robertson. The cross from Robertson and Mark Hitley gets his second goal of the match. It's, it's Celtic match. 1, Rangers 2. 42 minutes gone. It's a great ball by Brian Loudrop. David Robertson using his pace to perfection there. Gets in behind Barry Smith. A great low cross. The man in form, Martin Hitley attacks the front post, gets in in front of Matt McNally and Gordon Marshall has no chance. 2-1 to Rangers. Well, Matt Hitley increases his tally to 10 goals this season. He scored a couple against Celtic last season. He struck twice this afternoon. Here comes Celtic now. Just about 90 seconds left of this first half. Rangers leading by two goals to one. What a fabulous pass that was by Loudrop. There didn't seem to be very much on Robertson using his tremendous pace with a way down the left. Loudrop has to thread it through to him. And Hitley again finishing with some considerable style. We're inside the final minute of this first half. Mr. Trombey trying to get his message across to Basil Bolly. And Celtic respond again in these closing seconds. It has been a good open first half. And Celtic get themselves the corner kick. Exceeded there by Wishart. O'Neill is well forward. It's Collins to deliver the cross. This is next day. Hitley is back doing some good defending now. And this is Loudrop. What a fabulous game he's having. But on that occasion, the pass falling just a bit short. I'm sure the Rangers fans will forgive him that one. So we're now into injury time as uh, Robertson scoops that one away. This is O'Neill finding Byrne, Celtic's goal scorer. He hits the early cross. And that's a free kick to Rangers. John Collins fouling Basil Bully. Well, Jerry, these games, more often than not, can, can be such a stalemate. And then, although not so many times there's been a no goals, no firm game, but certainly today there's plenty of action already in the first half. It's certainly sec making the second half, setting up for the second half to be an absolute cracker. Pouncing on the loose one, through for Loudrop, Hitley's through the middle, Houstra's arriving, and that's away by McNally, only as far as Murray. And Rangers have the throw-in, Tom Boyd there, making the challenge on Loudrop. Neil Murray leaving that one. They've now played. Just over a minute of injury time. The referee checked his watch as the ball's played through towards Hatley. Well, Mark Hatley will be booked for that. Well, that was rather silly by Mark Hatley. There was absolutely no need for it. It's such, such a splendid game. He's shown the yellow card and he's put himself under unnecessary pressure now. He kicked the ball into the crowd. And that is a bookable offence these days. So, a bit disappointing there. So there goes the half-time whistle. Well, Hitley booked a moment ago, but uh, two tremendous goals from the 
Rangers striker. The half-time score here at Hamden Park. It's Celtic 1, Rangers 2. Yes, some match half-time, as Jerry says. Celtic 1, Rangers 2. In a couple of minutes, the first half thoughts of Paul Elliott and Morris Johnston. We want to be saving the pennies. I want to be splashing out on smoked salmon and champagne. We want to be tightening those purse strings. I want to be wined and dined in Paris or Rome. We might want to be decorating a spare bedroom. I want to be painting the town. With a new Prudence long-term savings account, you can vary the amount you save each month or even take a break should you unexpectedly need to. We want to be having a Bible. Be what you want to be with the flexibility of a prudent savings account. OK, if I move back from the sun, there's the earth and the moon. Now, let's see how far away Saturn is. Wow, over 900 million miles. Doing your homework? Yeah, nearly finished. What powerful PC processor gives educational programs out of this world performance? And now, the Kirali system. The Intel Pentium processor. At Rover Dealers. We don't believe our job ends with the sale of a car. We believe that's where it begins. My chefs at Burger King sometimes tell me they see faces in the flames. I don't see it myself. I have a new bigger whopper this month at Burger King. Get another one free. Okay, free? Okay. Ah, uh, there's nothing there. Buy one great tasted flame grill whopper. Get another one free. You got it? There! Well, Saturday night at 8 o'clock. I know where I'm gonna go. I'm gonna pick my baby up and take her to the picture show. Saturday night and the moon. 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 Box. The is yours. Lou McCarry scoring there in the 1971 Scottish Cup final replay. Paul, 2-1 Rangers at, at Hamden. What do you make of the first 45 minutes? I think both teams have made a significant contribution to a fantastic game. The quality has been good. What's impressed me in particular has been the amount of possession and the quality of the passing. And you find that, in, in my experience, some of the old firm games, Jim, the, you know, even the ball needs a rest at half-time. You've got to be stretched <laughs> off and have a cup of tea. Because, you know, but, uh, yeah. you know, the quality, some of the passing has been very, very good. Some start more. Mark Hately right away showed that he was interested in this afternoon's proceedings. A header cleared off the line. Yeah, well, 
as you can see, Mark, he's straight, straight out of the top drawer. He's mm. a superb athlete, great player, and he's proved it today. He's scored two magnificent goals. We actually spoke about his aerial foot as well, didn't we, before how the two centre-backs were going to deal with that. Mm. And that was a perfect illustration after, early, after an early time, Jim. You know, uh, I mean, he was unlucky, he should have scored. A few minutes later, that Paul, after that, Paul, uh, Andy Walker, he shows he's interested too, and he, he's done pretty well, actually. Yeah, I mean, Andy, Andy's, a good, Andy's a good player, I like him. He's always quick, sp quick fault, speed of feet, and, uh, I mean, he was unlucky there. I mean, he hits it well on his left foot. I mean, that's, a, that's the nearest chance, because in all fairness, Rangers, I think, have defended very, very well. A penalty claim, Mo, did you feel Rangers were due this penalty? Yeah, for me it was certainly a penalty. Um, he's clipped Mark as he's went by him. Uh, for me it was a penalty. Mm. Let's have a look at it now then. Let, talk us through it, Paul. Yeah, I mean, it's a great run. And, uh, I mean, that's a lovely ball inside. I mean, Mark takes it on. And as far as I'm concerned, I mean, there you can see the contact's there. Mark's towed it. He's seen the defender coming. But there's no doubts in my mind. Celtic were very, very fortunate at that stage. And to be fair to Mark, he's gone on. He's been outstanding in the first half and got his just rewards with the goals. Little Simon Donnelly, Mo, he looks almost too young to be involved in something as awesome as this, but he's not overawed, that's for sure. A good header from him. He's a terrific, terrific young player. Um, I watched him closely in Canada. Um, his close control is magnificent, but he'll go on from strength to strength. First, he's the kind of games that bring the best out of young players. Hopefully, he can come on to a better second half. Mm. A great chance then fell to Rangers, and it fell in particular to Neil Murray. As Jerry said in commentary, Paul, maybe another player might have scored here. Maybe the wrong player was in the end of this one. Yeah, I mean, it was... Uh... Yeah, I mean, it's a great run again. I mean, that's where they've really uh, had problems. But the ball comes across, and on another occasion, you probably wanted Mark Haley to be on the end of that, because obviously the way he's playing and going with confidence all the time, the likelihood is he would have put that in the back of the net. OK, well, at that stage, it was nil-nil. We're going for another break now. In a couple of minutes' time, the second half of Celtic against Rangers live from Hamden. There are 550p coins in circulation. You can save one when you buy a McChicken sandwich extra value meal from McDonald's. There's never been a card quite like the Shell Smart Card. It lets you pick up gifts from Shell stations and save for bigger items from our catalogue. You can also donate money to charities. You can get UCI cinema tickets, discounts at HMV, or even collect air miles. Apply at your local Shell service station. Get smart. Get the card. If you're having trouble moving, pick up a free copy of the GSPC Weekly List. GSPC. We'll get you moving. quarter pounder with cheese extra value meal from mcdonald's save an equilateral curved heptagon seven sides i know not you them sorry friends provident has been helping people's dreams to blossom for 160 years by trusting our experience they've been able to plan for the future and realize their ambitions we can help you provide for the years ahead too with savings and investments, with pensions and with life assurance. Friends Provident. At every stage of your life, Friends Provide. So there you are then. New engines, new interiors, restyle, front and rear. The new face of the Vauxhall Astra. Yes, but our customers deserve more. Any thoughts? Uh, how about power steering a standard deck throughout the range? Think of the cost. Only a buffoon would consider it. <laughs> well, your power steering was inspirational. Thank you very much. Um, you haven't seen anything of GD, have you? Yes. I thought a spell in the vehicle exterior luster department might do him good. <laughs> Oh, 
Inspired by genius, driven by madness, one man is about to create an unspeakable terror. Live! Francis Ford Coppola presents a Kenneth Branagh film. Robert De Niro, Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. I'm a numismatist. I collect coins. You can save 50p when you buy a Big Mac Extra Valley meal. Then you can be a numismatist too. We'll be taking your calls later in the programme. Gordon Smith, looking a bit younger, with the winning goal in the 1978 League Cup final. Paul Haitley scored the opening goal at Hamden in today's mm -hmm. match, and it was some goal, wasn't it? Outstanding. Not just the goals, but his all-round contribution to the side. I mean, that was a great interception. Wins it deep. That's a great ball. Marks on his right foot, and that's a clinical finish. I mean, that's a man on top of his game, playing with a lot of confidence. Charlie Miller did well, didn't he, there, Mo? Charlie Miller done exceptionally well. He's looked up, he's had time to play Mark in, but what a quality finish that is. I mean, Marshall, not really with a, a chance of saving that one. No, he didn't really have a chance. Uh, Mark's picked his spot, and it's his, it's his bad leg. <laughs> well, I mean, to be fair to Celtic, heads didn't go down, and Paul Byrne brought them right back into it, Mo. I'm delighted for Paul, because he went through quite a lean patch at the moment. Um, he's looked up. This is a great, great ball in. And Tommy Boyd's played it across, and Paul Byrne smashed into the bottom right-hand corner. Great finish. Not a bad finish. 1-1 one, one at that stage then. Everything was happening. Bedlam breaking out, Paul. And then Haitley did it again. Yeah. Um, I think Tommy Burns will be disappointed because it's in the 42nd minute. I mean, it's a great, great, great run by Robertson. Great ball. And Haitley times up to perfection. OK. Well, let's go back to Hamden then and rejoin Alan McAnally and Jerry McNee for the second half of Celtic against Rangers. And welcome back to Hamden Park and uh, Celtic have been forced into change. Willie Faulkner has come on for Barry Smith. So Phil O'Donnell is uh, lying in a very deep role, almost in the left-back area, and Boyd has switched over to the right-hand side. He's picked up Peter Haustra, so Tommy Burns having to make a bit of a change. For sure, Jerry. Certainly no stranger to that position. Well, this is O'Neill for Celtic. A disappointing ball. So Phil O'Donnell keeping a very close watch on Loudrop in this second half. So that'll be an interesting situation to view. Good long kick from Gorham. It's away by O'Neill, returned by Robertson. O'Neill again for Celtic. And a free kick awarded against McLaren. And there's challenge on Walker. Celtic in a hurry to get on with things, but uh, referee Bill Crombie calling them back. Lots of retaken. So that was the challenge by McLaren. Celtic trying to get forward for, from that free kick. It's a high one from O'Neill. Donnelly's in there in front of the defence. Getting in there just in front of Bolly. High ball. Played in. And Donnelly just ahead of Bolly, but uh, wide of target. Very difficult for Simon to take the ball when it's coming down as high as that. So there's plenty of excuses for him there. Although I'm sure he thought the ball initially was, all, was going all the way through to Andy Gorham.
David Robertson, who had an effective first half and uh, helped set up Rangers' second goal, sending it back to his goalkeeper. I just wonder what the respective messages would be from the managers at halftime. I think Walter Smith obviously is, is very happy the way the team's playing. He's you know, Mark's leading the line very well up front and with, with Hauser and Loudrop orchestrating things, Charlie Miller being so influential, I'm sure he's very happy with David Robertson getting forward as he does as often as he can. Uh, has already managed to be produce or help to produce a goal. Tom, on the other hand, is going to be disappointed the amount of time Celtic seem to give the ball away, especially from, from deep positions, when they want his distribution a little bit better and create more chances, obviously. So Andy Walker trying to bear down and goal there, but uh, Rangers standing for him. Celtic certainly want a goal from a striker this afternoon. Uh, their only goal so far coming from Byrne, and uh, too many of the goals coming from players like that this season. They really have to get a bigger return, a better return from their strikers. Andy Walker, in fact, is the only one of the recognised strikers to have scored since August. So Walker digging in there, and uh, he wins another free kick, and again, McLaren is the culprit. He's feeling his own about it, so the referee time to get on with it. It's quickly taken. And McCall did well, and McCall is furious. But, uh, McLaren, I think, was so busy there, mouthing towards the referee, that uh, Celtic almost stole in, and McCall had to get back and uh, put in that challenge. Uh, Celtic having a little bit of a go now. This is Boyd, who's on the right-back position now. And it's off the line by Bolly. swinging in the high ball towards the substitute. Well, the Pollard did really well. That's the ball. He just used his body, young Simon Donnelly. Madison to get it away, but a very, very close thing there. So, 50 minutes gone here at Hamden Park. It's Celtic 1, Rangers 2. Both Rangers goals coming from Mark Haefeli. And Byrne, Paul Byrne, the scorer for Celtic. Here comes Collins now, trying to find Donnelly. He's picked up by Loudrop. Just gliding past McStay. He's got Wishart away to his right. This is Wishart. That was a power play again by Loudrop. That's a nice little ball played through towards Houstra. But uh, Brian Loudrop there, just gliding past Paul McStay. The foot on the accelerator, just stepping away from him. Great control and eventually pushing the ball through towards Fraser Wishart. Certainly seems to find another gear in those situations, Brian. Although that time, thankfully for Celtic, it never came to anything. Push almost getting onto the weighted ball. See McLaren's clearance. Celtic battling hard here, looking for the equaliser. Away by Charlie Miller, but, uh, picked up now by Simon Donnelly. This is John Collins. Good play by Collins. Well, he could have made the pass there to Burton, but uh, he tried to cut inside and the chance was lost. And this is Houser now, but overheading that one as McCall began his run. John desperately trying to get the ball on his left foot there to try and have a curling shot. Al McClellan made a good crunching tackle. Not allowing John to have any shot on target at all. Leon's is the referee. Celtic fans looking for a free kick there. This is O'Neill. Long one for Donnelly to chase. Wish it's with him. All spinning quickly off the surface and behind for the goal kick. Exactly, Jerry, what I said. You know, Tommy won't be happy with that. He has to find his front men rather than. It has been raining a little bit. The surface is quite slidey and the ball's not going to hold up for your strikers. It's going to do just exactly what it did there and run out the park. And that's not how Celtic are going to get themselves back in the game. Hatefully going for that one. 
free kick against Charlie Miller. And he had a fine first half. And here comes Celtic. It's uh, Basil Bowie getting in just ahead of Andy Walker. Simply Bowie has uh, operated efficiently this afternoon alongside McLaren, a new partnership. Celtic perhaps hoping to exploit it, but uh, so far they've done well. A bit of jersey pulling going on there, I think by Simon Donnelly. And, uh, McLaren involved as well, the referee though, trying to let the play flow as much as possible. This is Boyd for Celtic. Through to Walker, it's quickly closed down, lays it off there to Byrne. And falls behind McStay, it's picked up by Loudrop. Long one from McNally, and Bolly's head up. And they had to get that one away quickly because uh, Donnelly was threatening. This is Faulkner, the substitute. Looks away to O'Donnell. It's all a bit frantic at the moment. Swept away by McCall, only as far as O'Neill. This is Boyd, and has done ahead of him. It's played through towards Walker. McLaren's digging in hard, so too is the Celtic forward. Good determination by both players. It's mixed there across to Collins. Collins clipping the ball in. And uh, David Robertson. Uh, well, I thought he'd drawn out of that, but the referee is awarding a corner kick. Robertson can't believe it. Stuart McCall is furious. But uh, the referee pointing out towards the corner flag. Meanwhile, below us, Charlie Nicholas is preparing to come on. I don't think the referee has spotted the intention yet. I don't know how the referee can give a corner there because he was in no way in a position to give it, and the linesman never gave it. The Rangers get it away from the danger area. It's picked up now by Tom Boyd. Looking for Faulkner, good downward header by him. Well, a complete miscue by Hadley. Well, Gorham could actually have caught that ball because it was certainly not a deliberate pass back, but uh, he just decided to head it away. I think he did the right thing, Jerry. I wouldn't let you have caught the ball. I don't know what the referee may have given. But in their wisdom, I'm, I can always tell you exactly what he would have given. I think Andy did the right thing there. Celtic about to make that change and it's Paul Byrne, the goal scorer, who leaves the field and it's Charlie Nicholas who comes on to a huge ovation and Charlie Nicholas has scored eight goals in Premier League matches against Rangers if he was to strike again this afternoon that would be a record for a Celtic player he holds the position along with Tom McAdam both scored eight goals in Old Firm matches. Of course, Rangers have uh, a substitute down there as well, Ali McCoyst, uh, who has 24 goals against Celtic in his career. And I just wonder if at any stage he'll come into the proceedings. But certainly, Rangers in the driving seat, leading by two goals to one. Early touch for Nicholas, it doesn't come off. It's McCall who plays it through. McStay dug in there well for Celtic, but it breaks Rangers way again. This is Loudrop. And uh, a little slip by him there. There's Tommy Burns running to the edge of the, the pitch there to return the ball. I think when Morris said in the studio earlier on, I thought Tommy wants to play. I think he's almost right. He was almost on the pitch there. This is O'Neill, who's well forward, but uh, completely mishits that one. Just about, I think, if you're going to bring MD on, I think Charlie certainly could be very influential for Celtic. Got a great touch, and maybe that's exactly what Tommy wants. He wants quality balls, play through to his striker, support play, keep possession, and make chances for him to score. And Charlie's certainly no stranger to this fixture. And Celtic are hoping they can do something magic. Awarded against Hitler. Well, the 
game, certainly been played at a fast and furious pace, but in a good spirit by both sets of players. And they're the only booking to Mark Catelyn. That was simply for kicking the ball away just before half time. So uh, both sets of uh, players getting on with things. This is uh, Collins. And it's O'Neill providing the pass back. tells the story there. Here comes Celtic now, and it's McLaren who makes the pass back. I said a moment ago that uh, Haithley's was in the weekend because McLaren also falling foul of the referee. So we have to be careful. The official attendance this afternoon, 32,171. And the uh, three steps in now and awards a free kick to Rangers. John's certainly catching Schumer McCall a little bit late there. Well, like you said, it certainly hasn't been a dirty game at all. The, the game has flowed, the referees tried to let the game flow. And if the second half so is anywhere half as good as the first, and hopefully we're in for another feast. It stayed as well there. This is Faulkner. So again, Celtic uh, have to show some more imagination. Celtic fans howling for a free kick there. The Doc Walker had been impeded. But uh, Celtic uh, hitting too many hopeful balls. So Hamden Park looking splendid these days and uh, the south stand uh, which uh, we're sitting above at the moment uh, will be demolished and replaced uh, next year and hopefully taking the, the uh, capacity to more than 50,000 it would be nice to see this ground hosting European finals again sometime in the future again the referee tells players to get on with it Mr Crombie trying to let things flow it might be to Celtic's advantage but Faulkner beaten to the ball by Andy Gorham. Willie Faulkner doing exactly what Tommy Burns wanted him to do two seconds ago. Was get forward and the ball's played forward and trying to get onto the end of, of long balls through like that. And that's exactly what he almost did. The ball was just a little bit too strong for him and threw on to Andy Gorham. So Celtic chasing the equaliser. They're trailing by two goals to one, but uh, with Woudrop out there, they know but uh, one more slip could be fatal. This is Collins for Celtic. Down the line looking for Donnelly. Across comes McLaren. Again, a no-nonsense clearance from the Rangers defender. Decent cross, the looping header, off the bar! Well, Celtic so unlucky. A good cross, delivered. And the looping header going in there, off the bar. Certainly the first time today I've seen Andy Gorham at 6 and 7, I really didn't know an awful lot about it. Put the gunner with the cross in. Couldn't get a great deal on the head of Andy. And it's almost eluded Andy Gorham there. The Rangers a little bit lucky to get away with that one. Celtic coming right into the game now, looking for the equaliser. 
Here come Rangers again. It's that man Woudrup finding a bit of space for himself. House is running his support. Hitley's in the middle. This is Houstra. And the flag's up for Ball was just out of play. Brian actually just tried to be too fancy there. Instead of doing the simple thing, which would have been, have been sufficient for Peter Houser to get the ball, tried the back heel flick, and it just went out of play. As good as he is, it, as he is at it, didn't quite come off from that time. to Nicholas Celtic will be encouraged by what's happened in the last few minutes they're starting to make some inroads but again it was obvious the danger of Loudre there's Walter Smith down there with that you know it's Walter Smith taking part in his 15th all for a match as a manager this afternoon he's won six of them lost four and drawn four and he's won the French matches in both the Scottish Cup and the League Cup so far. And here's a moment for uh, Wishart to watch carefully, and uh, he responds well, despite the threat of Faulkner. So really Faulkner coming on as substitute in the recent weeks, and uh, certainly pushing himself more and more into the plans of Tommy Burns. It looked as if, at one stage as if he'd be leaving Celtic. Long clearance from Marshall. McLaren's in there. It's returned by McNally. So the game really at a crucial stage. Celtic battling hard for the equaliser. Rangers looking for the goal that would perhaps finish it all off. This is Collins through to Donnelly. But Donnell, that's a good ball. This is Faulkner. Across comes McLaren to make a very good challenge indeed. Great challenge by Al McLaren there again. Will he get himself into the forward, forward position? Al McLaren coming in and making a great challenge there. And the offside flag is up as uh, John Collins ran onto that ball. And Walter Smith and Upton Ox out there again. Fitting instructions to them in. They know this is a vital spell of the match I think exactly what you said there Jerry you just want them to get more of a group together as, as a defence have been strung about a little bit and here's the break on for Loudrop showing tremendous pace, he's past the goalkeeper a sensational goal by Loudrop 65 minutes gone Loudrop racing through the middle he had the pace to get away Round the goalkeeper, O'Neill tried to get to the ball, they got a touch to it, but it's very much Loudrop's goal, tremendous pace, again, getting away from the defender, remaining calm as he runs to the goalkeeper, it's Rangers 3, Celtic 1. You see what you like about Brian Loudrop, I said it all the time, he's the most exciting player in Scottish football, he's got tremendous skill, but what he really does have is pace to go with it, and he left Brian O'Neill for dead, round the goalie, made this the finish look very simple but like you said Jerry he was the first to react from the flick off from Mark Haley the Rangers are really in the driving seat now and Celtic have a mountain to climb if they want to get anything from this game at all superb superb goal from Brian Lodrick well as Celtic push forward you can almost see that goal coming Lodrick bouncing Rangers fans delighted, there's uh, Ali McCoyst, a veteran of so many of these games, and David Hagen with him. Could have been instructions there for Ali to go and get a good 5 or 10 minute warm up, I think Walter might be even thinking about bringing him on now. I sent them to the latter stages of the game. So a jubilation among the small band of Rangers fans. seen some terrific play from the team this afternoon and from Loudrop in particular 
but a good team performance by Rangers. And that's delightful play again between McCall and Miller. Hatley's running through the middle. Hatley's here, just ahead of the goalkeeper. Rangers trying to get players forward. Loads up to the far side, it's played short to Murray. Celtic pouring players back. Still Rangers have it, it's Miller. And he's shot with that when it's cut out. Goalie comes in. Crunching into that challenge. He's enjoying himself. I'm afraid that's something Celtic are just going to have to put away today. They're going to be pulling men forward, trying to get back into the game. And there'll be spells in this last half hour or so that they're going to be stretched at the back. And Gordon Marshall's going to have to play as a last man defender, a sweeper. Can Celtic pull back a goal and give themselves some kind of chance? Just over midway through the second half, they're trailing by three goals to one. That's a good pass from Nicholas. The chance almost on for Collins here, but Fraser Wishart coming across with a good ball across goal from Simon Donnelly, but Wishart responded well. The problem was, was it that it was a superb through ball from Charlie Nicholas? The problem was that Simon Donnelly was always on his own up front and there wasn't enough further forward players for Celtic to cause on a real danger when the ball came into the box. So Collins delivers across, got him, commits himself, he's lost it. No, it's chopped off by the referee. Well, Andy Walker not enjoying the best of good fortune this afternoon. He had a header against the bar. That goal is chopped off and Andy Gorham has taken it off. Well, Gorham committed himself and went for it. Well, you know I'm not a great lover of goalkeepers getting too much there may have been a little contact, Andy came to win the ball, there may have been a little contact, but for me that's a 50-50 ball, Andy failed to take the ball cleanly, and it should have been a goal for Celtic as far as I'm concerned, I said the goalkeeper's got a little bit too much protection, and I'm sorry I said against the referee there, I would have let the goal stand, Andy never took the ball cleanly enough. Well they say the bricks even themselves out, in the great game, and perhaps... Uh, that makes up for the very strong penalty claim Rangers had in the early stages of the match. But uh, it's a warning for Rangers that uh, maybe there's still just a little bit of work to be done. 70 minutes have been played now. Rangers leading by three goals to one. Two from Hatley, one from Loudrup and uh, Byrne, the scorer for Celtic. And the referee the free kick against Paul McStay. That's played through by Haustra, trying again to use the pace of David Robertson. Well, it certainly worked out for Rangers' second goal this afternoon when uh, Loudrup played that delightful ball through to the Rangers' fullback. But here comes Celtic now, it's McStay. It's headed away by McClam. Long ball now for Hatley. But, uh, McNally challenges strongly and challenges well. He seems to be very happy Mark McNally when he is doing a man-to-man -man marking job. Although Mark Hitley bagged a couple today, Mark McNally has played a little better than he has of late. Well, all the noise, as you can imagine, coming from that small band of Rangers fans, the Celtic supporters rather quiet at the moment. But here comes Celtic. It's Faulkner. This is Hauser now for Rangers, looking for Loudrup. Takes it well, brilliant play again, stepping away from O'Donnell. Still it's Loudrup. He just makes it look so easy, doesn't he? I'm sure he's feeling the pace a little bit now, Jerry. You know, 70 minutes gone. He's had a few real foraging runs. This is McCall. Challenge all the way by Collins. And that's out of play, so the throw goes to Celtic. Tommy Burns and Billy Stark looking for just a bit more. Walker gives chase. And that's good defending by Fraser Wishart. He really has played splendidly this afternoon. Superb professional.
just 29 years of age, he's been around for a long while, and to be able to come in to this kind of atmosphere this afternoon and play the way he has, he must be delighted with himself so far. I think Walter Smith must be very happy with him when he can, he can include him in. Well, that's a very late challenge by David Robertson, and he'll be shown the yellow card for that. The referee books the Rangers fullback very late there with his challenge on Charlie Nicholas. So nothing comes of that for Celtic. Time running away from them. Rangers leading by three goals to one. And this is an afternoon these supporters will remember. Nicholas playing it through, still has a lovely touch, finding fault now, but uh, he loses out to Houstra. Rangers on the break again, it's Loudrup, Hately through the middle, Rangers don't have many players forward at this stage, but uh, Loudrup trying to go all the way through, and he gets the corner kick, but again, superb skill, great running, it really is a pleasure to watch. Just seems to find that, just that extra gear when he's going past players, Brian. Mark McNally just could not get it. So it's loud of himself to take the corner. Hately was left there in a bit of space. It's Bullies downward header. The chance on for Houstra. Great save by Marshall. Away by McNally. And the shot going in from Murray. Over the top. Fine save by Marshall. Deep cross from Brian Roger. Inevitably, Mark Hately. Wins the header. I think Husser was actually a little bit surprised to see the ball get through to him from Wally's header. But God makes a great save and keeps Celtic in the game meantime, if only just. It's a long ball played through by Boyd. McLaren does well. This is Robertson. Robertson charging forward here, leaving it now to Loudrup. 75 minutes gone, the offside flag goes up against David Robertson, who had continued his move forward. Yeah, Brian Lowe looking for the ball all the time. He certainly was offside. David had kept his own forward, just couldn't stay onside. And this is Nicholas for Celtic. O'Donnell. Here comes Collins. To that favoured left foot of his, but it's Houstra who's deep in his own defence. And he does the wise thing, gets it away from the danger area. Nicholas floats in the high wind. Again, McLaren's there. Chested down by Murray. Bolly's breaking out of defence now. Hatley's away to his right. Loudrup stays left. Celtic have been in serious trouble here. Still, it's Hatley. Hitley trying to curl the shot round Gordon Marshall. And Basil Bully springing out of defence, uh, causing real problems for Celtic there, getting the ball to Hitley. Yeah, Basil, I know he did, he was looking for someone to pass the ball to as soon as he passed over the halfway line. Mark trying to curl the ball round Big Garden, but unfortunately, Big Gordon rather. Unfortunately, not enough curling the ball. Pushing forward again, this is Simon Donnelly. Still it's Donnelly, but high over the target, but the ball deflecting, and uh, the corner kick awarded to Celtic. That's exactly what Celtic need a little bit more of. They need a little bit more urgency, a little bit more aggression when they get into that last third of the field and make something happen, rather than hoping it that it will. And it's the only way they're going to get back into the game. Let's see if they can get something from the corner. Celtic pushing just about every one forward. McNally's up there, so too is O'Neill. That's behind for the goal kick. Well, as Celtic push forward, trying to haul themselves back into this game, there's always the danger of the counter attack, and that's exactly what's causing them problems. So, Tommy Burns there looking on and realise now that this game is very much running away from his team. 
Right from the start, the Rangers have been the better side. This is McNally. It's Charlie Nicholas. Still Celtic have it. Boyd, Donnelly's outside him, McCall's there challenging, Donnelly knocks it back, Bully challenge as well, McStay's there for Celtic, that's good play by McStay, the chance is up for Collins, that's a magnificent save by Andy Gorham, good play by the Celtic captain Paul McStay getting the ball through to Collins and Andy Gorham making a very good save indeed. So it's Collins who drives it in, it's Houser who gets a touch, Loudrop's there as well, but loses out to O'Donnell, of course comes Fraser Wishart. Celtic have the throw. Good little bit of pressure by Celtic there, Andy Gordon making a superb save by John Collins, I'm sure John thought he was going to score. The Scotland teammate denied him. John Collins has scored in five of the last six Old Firm matches in which he's played, and uh, if he were to score this afternoon he'd create a record of five in a row, no one's ever done that. Jimmy Johnson was the one that came closest to it with uh, four in a row against Rangers. But uh, no one really thinking about too many records out there. There's a real hard slog going on. Celtic trying to keep the pressure on here, trying to get themselves back in. But it has been a real quality performance by this Rangers team this afternoon. Hitchley trying to stab that ball towards Houstra, but it's picked up now by Simon Donnelly. And uh, Gorham shouts for the defender to leave the ball, but uh, Wishart did touch it, and uh, it's a corner kick, and uh, perhaps amid all the din here, Wishart couldn't keep, uh, hear his goalkeeper. So in comes a corner again. Once again, Rangers stand firm. McLaren took a little bit of a knock there as he cleared that one. So... Ten minutes left, Rangers leading by three goals to one, here comes Celtic again, it's Collins, blocked by Fraser Wishart, it's John Collins again. This is McNally, Nicholas lying deep, sending the ball through, but it all breaks down. Very difficult for Celtic, Rangers playing very, very well as a defensive unit and midfield unit. And for Celtic to break them down, it will need a little bit of individual brilliance. But at the moment, they just haven't got that little bit to trouble Andy Gorham's goal. It's played in towards uh, Walker. This is Wishart, Faulkner closing in quickly, and the defender gets it away. So Donnell with the throw, again looking for Walker, but again Fraser Wishart's in there. And I think there might be a few extra pounds, uh, bonus money getting into Wishart's wage packet this week. He really has been splendid, again he attacks the ball with Collins, but Collins gets a better of him that time. Swept across now by Walker. Picked up by David Robertson. Clips it to Houstra. Nice little turn by Houstra, and he wins the free kick. And really fought that, the culprit, but a uh, delightful little turn that uh, by Houstra, taken out of the play. Great skill by Peter Houstra there. Just a little drive back in his foot. Will they come in late and catching him? under eight minutes left Celtic one Rangers three it's Nicholas trying to get Celtic going and through now to Donald the offside flags up against Andy Walker well, the Celtic fans not happy with that decision but the flag going up immediately as Donnelly played the ball through uh, the linesman got it absolutely right Pouring down here at Hamden, but the Rangers 
fans in the full cry. So Hitley's head up. Uh, Murray forcing O'Donnell to cover a bit of ground there. Lovely off from Donnelly, not a very good one, but uh, Collins battles hard. That's O'Neill pushing forward. It's Nicholas Selby have got to do something quickly. Less than seven minutes left. This is Loudra, but uh, too many Celtic players around him on that occasion. It's away by Miller. Loudra's breaking again. Showing tremendous pace. Again, he's by the goalkeeper. H Hitley's with him. The player tumbles to the ground, and the referee indicates it's a goal kick. Well, it looked like another goal for Loudrup. Again, he had the pace to get away from the defender. He grabbed the goalkeeper. He was just a bit wide on this occasion. He decided to take the goalkeeper on again. He might have knocked that one back to Mark Hitley. But... Uh, it's hard to be critical of a player who's put so much into the game this afternoon, and you can see he really is toiling a bit now. No one will know, only Brian Hitler will know, uh, Brian, <laughs> Brian Loudrop will know why he never actually had a shot on target there. I can only say, obviously, he's feeling the pace, and he was a little bit tired after another great run. And I'm sure Paul Elliott back in the studio can sympathise with some of the Celtic defenders. When you're playing against a man that has some skill and the pace that he has to go by defenders, it really is sometimes a nightmare. This is Walker for Celtic. They're looking for Donnelly, but uh, Bolly read the situation. And again, the Rangers centre-backs taking no chances. That's the way they've operated all afternoon, just playing the simple ball away, getting away from the danger zone. And uh, both uh, Bolly and McLaren have been doing that. So just under five minutes left now. Rangers leading by three goals to one. Loudrop digging in again, looking for McCall. McNally comes across there and shoots the ball high out of play. I'm certainly presuming that that's one of the, one of the tactics, or so-called tactics, that Walter Smith has, has given his back for today, and it's exactly that. Take no chances. As confident as Andy Gorham is with the back pass. The ball's been played to safety, and because of that, Rangers have, delivered, have looked at, no time, at most times under no pressure at the back at all. Rangers about to make a change. Uh, David Hagan has warmed up down on the track side, but uh, here come Rangers through Hatley. Still, it's Hatley. Good skills by the big striker. Still, he's battling away, but losing out eventually. So, just under four minutes left, and Rangers will make that change now. Only four minutes left here, but Stuart McCall bursting a gut to get back to do his defending job in midfield. This one Celtic could have run the break. He clears the danger. So Charlie Miller, who's had a splendid game and who helped set up the opening goal, is off to a huge ovation. And he's replaced by David Hagan, who made his first appearance of the season last Saturday. There's another player who's been transfer listed, but... Uh, I think after the squad performance today, Walter Smith will be looking at one or two of these players again. They certainly get a lot out of them this afternoon. But here comes Celtic, it's Charlie Nicholas playing it through. Good running there by Boyd. It's picked up though by Houstra. So just under three minutes left. Robertson survives that challenge. Across it comes to Loudrop. Hagen's running in support. But uh, he's a tired man now, it's Loudrup. Uh, Hagen going in a good run down the right-hand side, but uh, Celtic have it again. This is Faulkner. Wishart steps in. This is Hatley with McNally. Both players topple to the ground. But a lot of tired legs out there now. Yeah, I think for sure, obviously, Walter Smith between the two managers is going to be very happy 
I think they'd be more than happy with Charlie Miller's performance today. Wasn't just a player in the team today, had a great influence in the game. Set up the first goal for Mark Hately, and on the same hand, I think Tommy's going to be very happy with Simon Donnelly. He's tried to create two very young players in a big game, big atmosphere, and I thought that both of them have handled themselves very, very well indeed today. Well, Rangers moving forward, and they're about to make another change because Ali McCoyst is now ready to come into the fray. With just two minutes left, and it's Loudrup who's coming off. I don't think he wants to leave the field, he's been enjoying himself, but he's put so much into the game. I think he's, he's asking his way to the dressing room now. So on comes uh, Ali McCoyce to a huge roar. Well, it would be the tale ending if he could score his 300th first-team goal for Rangers in these closing stages. He's been sitting in 299 for a while. And he's given away a free kick. Well, one or two people saying uh, he's only in 298, but Ali himself claims it's 299. And, uh, well, his first uh, act there is to give away a free kick. But Rangers have the ball again. This is Hagen. It's McStay, who's worked hard for Celtic this afternoon, but uh, it's been a difficult day for him. But you do wonder about his overall fitness. He has been fighting against injuries. So we're now inside the final minute of the match. Rangers leading Celtic by three goals to one. This is O'Neill. Now it's John Collins. It's played through by Donnelly. This is Mick Stay. It looks all about consolation for Celtic now. There's the substitute, David Hagen, getting the ball away. Picked up by O'Donnell. So really, a splendid Rangers performance this afternoon. And Walter Smith will be a delighted man after a difficult start to the season for him and his players. John Collins there, who's been such a thorn in Rangers' side in the last couple of years. Well, they haven't been able to weave any great magic for Celtic this afternoon. So we're now into injury time as Charlie Nicholas sends him the cross. Ball is there. This is Collins. Playing it through to Simon Donnelly. And Wishart makes the challenge. Throw it to Celtic. at the top of the league they have defeated Celtic here at Hamden this afternoon two goals by Haitley one by Loudrup Walter Smith a happy man the full time score Celtic 1 Rangers 3 so the curtain comes down on the second Old Firm clash of the season in a couple of minutes we'll look at the key incidents with Paul Elliott and Morris Johnson If you want to put some money aside with Pearl, you might think we make a song and dance about it. Money to put aside? Save! You ought to have a pension and get your luck insured. Save! Your children's future's vital, the best you can afford. Save! Savings and investments for growth and income too. The future of your family will all come down to you. In fact, with Pearl, there is no song and dance. Lean on me. Before we sell you a policy, a pension, or a plan, we'll give you a person. Over the years, you've done all the essentials, but now you've got a bit more to put aside. There's some things you might think about. I'll make some suggestions. You can tell me what you want. Make Pearl People your best policy. The winner. Full of knowledge about Scottish football. Full of wisdom on tactics and play. Constantly updating facts on teams, players, managers and results. Don't miss your copy. Every Monday in the Daily Record. I wish it had been around earlier. 
Philips has invented the ultimate compact disc player, CDI. It doesn't just play music, it also plays movies. It brings knowledge to life and takes games into whole new worlds. Philips CDI. Come, come in, come. One player, countless opportunities. Philips invents for you. Aptiva? Yeah, Aptiva. Their new album's kicking when you play it loud. He's ten feet long. His teeth were as sharp as razors. I had such a wild holiday in Aptiva. <gasps> How'd that one get in there? Aptiva. She's the Swiss banker who cornered the zinc market. The house of Aptiva. You wouldn't catch me going up there. Aptiva. It's whatever you want. However, whenever, why ever you want it. It's the new PC. Ah. Aptiva. From IBM. Hey. You want to know what I do when I get bored waiting for my girlfriend to decide what to wear before we go out? Nah, too frumpy. Too tight. Nah, too revealing. I just slip into this little gray plastic number. is to shape it. The new BMW Compact. What are you doing? Staying awake, Mostyn. I have to be at my bank first thing and I can't take the chance of oversleeping. Look, for the hundredth time, just get an Alliance current account. They've got 24-hour phone banking. You mean... Are yes! You... So many... No! But there's no... Yes, there is! Call now for more details about an Alliance account. Paul Wilson, the scorer there in the 1975 Glasgow Cup final. The second Old Firm game of the season has come and gone. What did you think? Paul Cooney, Gordon Smith and John Cahoon are waiting for your calls on 0500 404 000 and we'll be joining them shortly. Paul Elliott, it has come and gone. What did you think? Outstanding game. I mean, I really felt that uh, that game has done Scottish football a lot of good. Um, obviously, with a lot of disappointment, the club's coming out through Europe, possibly a lot of criticism. I'm fairly levelled at the Scottish game. I mean, that quality today of both sides, not just Rangers, you know, was a real contribution to a, a fantastic game. Mo Celtic had to chase a game at the start of the second half. Andy Walker did all right, and he, he posed a bit of a threat to Andy Gorham here. Yeah, he was very unlucky. Great header here. I think Andy had it covered, but you see um, David Robertson clears, clears his lines. Um, it was a kind of half chance. It was really a full chance there, and he's cleared his lines. Paul, Mo told us at the end of last week, Brian Loudrop, somebody who runs at you for fun. <laughs> what a great line, and that was absolutely typified this afternoon. Superb. What, what a goal here. I mean, you need a taxi to keep up with him there, and I don't think the taxi would have caught him. But, I mean, his pace and power, the way he's penetrated throughout the whole game, and his composure, even after running 50 yards with the ball, brings it around the keeper and slots it into an empty net. Mm. I mean, that's a player of the highest order. I mean, he's a world-class performer. There's no doubts about that. You would like to play against him, Paul? Uh, I'm better off retired. <laughs> <laughs> Celtic Moore had a, a goal disallowed now. What, what did you think? I think Alan McAnally thought the goal should have stood. Yeah, well, as you can see here, Andy Gorham's coming for it. The lads challenged him, and Andy Walker's putting into the net. I would say it's a 50 50. Mm. Andy's tried to take it cleanly, but he's, he's let it fall, and Andy Walker's put it into the net. I'd give a goal for that, actually. You give because a goal I think at times the problem is the referees sometimes you know, overprotect goalkeepers. Mm. I mean, the goalkeeper's got to come, he's got to retrieve the ball. He tried to come, he didn't get it. And I think he, um, he certainly goal should have stood. Well, still on the goalkeeping theme, mm -hmm. Paul, I mean, Marshall did brilliantly, for saving from Houster towards the end, didn't he? Yeah, I mean, he'd done well. I mean, that was, uh, I mean, Mark's left there, unattended in the box, absent from leave. I mean, that's a great save. I mean, he does it well. He closed them down well there, yeah, more, didn't he? Yeah, it's a quality yeah. save. Um, he's, he's played quite well. Um, he's had no chance for the three goals. Um, you see, point blank stop. Um, very good save. 
your chum, Andy Gorham, he did it again at the other end. A tremendous save from John Collins. Well, what can you say about Andy? He's, uh, he's had his ups and downs. Um, he's had a few injuries, but um, magnificent goalkeeper, um, as you see here. Now, there Comics day, Collins Comics day's done brilliant. John Collins is trying to come and he's trying to play him inside. And what a save that is. It's world class. Felt maybe John could have come across him, but it was a great stop. Yeah, of course. There it is again, Mo. I mean, great reflex. I like what you say it? about him. Um, he, he's done magnificent. He does it so often for Rangers, doesn't he? Yeah, well, as I say, he's a quality goalkeeper. I played him for two seasons, and for me, um, possibly the best goalkeeper I've played with. You think the result was the right one, Mo, in terms of pressure? Yeah. Well, Celtic had it the first 20 minutes in the second half, and then all of a sudden, Brian Loudrop, you can't stop this man. As mm. I said before, he runs at you for fun, and he, he's scoring for fun at the moment. That's it. 3-1 Rangers, it finished. Well, the winner of our first goal scorer competition is Andreen Roberts from Carnoustie, who picked Mark Haitley to open the scoring. Your prize, a Bells League Championship football autographed by players from every senior club. And still on the competition theme last week on Scott Shot, we saw Charlie Nicholas lining up against his Celtic teammate Gordon Marshall. Here's how that one turned out. Well, this week it's Davy Cooper's turn on the spot and facing up to him once again is Gordon Marshall. So, where did the ball end up? Check the grid in today's Sunday Mail, then ring 0891 11223. The solution will appear in next week's Sunday Mail and we'll show the action in next Sunday's Scott Sport. And we'll take another break now. In a couple of minutes, your chance to have your say. Remember the telephone number 0500 404 000. The calls are free and Paul, Gordon and John will be taking them right after this short break. We're out of tomatoes. Kevin, we're out of fresh tomatoes. No fresh tomatoes, Lionel. There's only one thing for it, then. No. Yes. Don't give me that. Yes. I can't do that. What do you want? <laughs> OK, drill over. Back to your positions. Only in dire emergencies would Peterland use tin tomatoes. And it's never happened yet. No, Lionel, I, I, I bruise easily. We're taking pizza very seriously at Pizza Land. One mobile phone network covers under half the UK population. Another covers under three quarters. But Cellnet covers 98% of the UK population. So it's hardly surprising that in the last 12 months, more than three quarters of a million people have joined Cellnet. Shouldn't you be on the big network? The ambassador's receptions are noted in society for their host's exquisite taste that captivates his guests. Ferrero Rocher. Delicious. Mm. Excellent. Monsieur, who is this Rocher already spoiling us? Ferrero Rocher, a sign of good taste. The first thing I stuck my lungs. Belief is everything. I've never been afraid of heights, ever. I guess I have a pretty healthy fear of death. You conquer fear through knowledge. One centimeter this way or that way, and it's 400 miles down. I've got to know this car is going to deliver. Control! I'm a 
control freak! You want to ask it to do something? It responds. They think my stunts are crazy. Philips has invented the ultimate compact disc player, CDI. It doesn't just play music, it also plays movies. It brings knowledge to life and takes games into whole new worlds. Philips CDI. Come in, come in. One player, countless opportunities. Philips invents for you. It's not 261, it's 260 oh. degrees centigrade exactly. Beats the land. Singling up at Johnston. Steam again, but a chance. So Colin Steen, the Rangers goal scorer there from the 17th of May 1975. We're going on to the phones in a moment, but the first caller, well, he's live at Hamden, the Rangers manager, Walter Smith, with Jim Delahunt. Thanks very much, Paul. Walter, that was a marvellous performance by your side. As I felt, especially in the first half, we played very well indeed, and they deserved to be up. Second half, as you would expect, Celtic put us under a fair bit of pressure territorially. But uh, that allowed us to, to break away and we might have even added to our score in the second half. I just said to you a minute ago before we came on air that Brian Loudrop had a great game and you said, ah, he's no bad. Well, <laughs> he's, uh, it's a different type of partnership we have up front this season. Ali McCoy and Mark Haitley have shared that responsibility um, over the last few seasons. And uh, Brian's an entirely different type of player from Ali, more the creator of chances, although he got one today. And he, he picks the ball up and runs at defences, which causes him a problem. So uh, we've taken a little while to adjust to that, but uh, terrific performance from him today. Would you say that that's your best team performance of the season? It's certainly the best team performance we've had this season. I mean, you know, I, I was even a little bit worried here in the sense that the players are just put together. We don't have a great deal of opportunity to work with them on a regular basis because of injury. But uh, I felt today they were very solid. And although Celtic had a lot of territorial advantage in the second half, they, they really, I felt, created as much in the first half of the game when it was more even. Well done today, Bol Walter. Back to Paul in the studio. OK, thanks, Jim. And Walter, the first caller, in fact, about the player you were talking about, about Brian Loudrup, it's Chris Patterson from Glasgow. Chris, you're through. What's your point? I'd like to say that Brian Loudrup is too good for Scottish football. He is running in and out of fullbacks every week. He should be playing in, in a better standard of football in another country. But, Chris, are you not happy to see him playing here? Uh, yes, I'm unhappy, but I think he should be playing in a better country. <laughs> OK, John? Um, no, I would disagree with you. I think the problem with, with Scots is we sometimes put our game down too quickly. Um, I think we should just enjoy the fact that Brian Loudrop's playing in Scotland and hope that he inspires uh, some youngsters uh, out there and even some players playing in the Premier League to, to try and emulate him and play like him. And we saw him just this classic goal this afternoon. You knew he was going to score as soon as he got on the end of this ball. Yeah, it was a terrific touch on. I mean, thank goodness for Brian Loudrop, let's be honest. Goes through here, look at the pace of him as he goes there. He knows what he's doing, takes the keeper on. Got a little bit of a, of a break at the end of it, but... You know, let's hope that he spawns a generation of, of kids watching him. It's fantastic he's playing Scottish football. He could be playing in another country. I mean, Chris is saying that he should, but he could be. I mean, he was in Italy before. He's a fantastic player. He's been in Germany as well. Thank goodness he's playing his trade here now because we need players like that. We need to brighten the game up. And as I say, the main thing is from the point of view is kids watching that to see that, you know, you can get to these heights, you can run with the ball, you can dribble. There's not enough of that in Scottish football nowadays. John, he could be the difference for Rangers this season, the signing of Brian Lydra. Yes, he is. He's a real quality player. He played against us early in the season and, and almost single-handedly uh, took us apart when, when they beat us 3-0. Uh, but I never thought in my lifetime I would see a Scottish club signing players from AC Milan and Marseille and I just hope other clubs can, can generate finance to follow them. Because they're good for the young players. Now, some people would say they should be restricted and you've been involved with the PFA for a long time, but you don't agree with that? Not at that quality, not at that level. I think um, we can only encourage players like that to come. Not the, the second-rate uh, foreign players that, that sometimes we get, but um, more the Brian Loudrops and uh, players like him. Do you want to name names about some of the second-raters? Me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hardly. Right, the next caller, Colin Runciman, on the line from Falkirk. Colin, good Hello. afternoon. What's your point? Hello. Hello there. I'd like to make a point about Fraser Wishart. I think it's about time the guy got a chance to play it right back for Rangers. It's a so-called problem position. It's a did, final thing. Yeah, he did well this afternoon, Gordon. 
Yeah, well, I agree with Colin. I think uh, he's waited far too long. He, he played initially at Rangers when he went there at first, Colin, and uh, he did very well. He had five or six good games. Gary Stevens came back in. He was left out, and yeah, he's back in today. He's been missing for a long, long time. I noticed that Fraser wasn't even in the, the Rangers first team squad photograph this season. I'm very surprised that he was in the reserve team photograph. He's come through today, and Rangers have been in the right back all season, and there he gets his chance, and, and obviously he's taken it, and he could have a run in the team now. Two years ago, it looked as though he was uh, well. He was out of the game for a, a time, signing on the brew. So it's quite a turnaround for Fraser. Yes, yeah, turnaround for Fraser. Uh, he played very well today. Um, but I would say that the player that they had playing right back in season, Craig Moore, um, played very well well against us. And um, uh, I think he's a quality player. And he, but he's got a little bit of uh, time to come on. And I think Fraser will take his chance just now and, and string a run together. How did you feel about Alan McLaren today? You've been playing with him uh, for so long at Tynecastle. He's now doing well for Rangers. Yeah, I was never um, worried about Alan, how he would handle today's game. I knew he would handle it very well um, because he's a quality player and he's got a good temperament for that. And, and he slotted in and, and looked at home and I'm delighted for him because he's a, a lovely lad and he's a very good footballer. And big Dave McPherson yesterday, do well for you? Yeah, Dave did well for us. Um, one or two uh, team troubles when he passed it back to Henry's right foot. He must have thought it was Andy Gorham. Uh, but Dave had a, a great strike from about 35 yards, uh, and they must have learned that at Ibrox. Uh, but yeah, Dave, he's a quality player. Bottom for his goal scoring, John. Yeah, <laughs> he handled himself well with Gordon, didn't he, in the transfer? Dave McPherson, very positive about going to Tynecastle. That was the right way to uh, accept it, really. He said that you know, he was looking forward to going to Hearts. It was a, a great move from this stage of his career. Rather than talk about leaving Rangers and the disappointment, he gave up his contract to go. Obviously, got a good deal financially, but the main thing was he was positive about going to Hearts, and if he can turn things around for them, and start things a good run with them. It's, it's a marvellous signing, I think. OK, back onto the lines, up to Aberdeen now, and James Smith. James, you're through. What's your point? Yeah, I would like you say the panel, would it be not better to play the Coca-Cola Cup final at Hamden instead of at Ibrox? Because there's not a lot of players get a chance to play at Hamden. Mm. And I think the Wraith players, there's not a lot of them played at Hamden should get the chance to play there, whether or not Celtic play yeah. there at home or not. OK, Gordon? Well, I think the, the Celtic players would rather play at Ibrox, the way things are going from the record at Hamden. It's not been very good of late, and uh, Wraith Rovers are trying to take the game to Hamden now, and you can see why after today. But I think I would agree with the caller that Wraith Rovers are now willing to play at Hamden, and that's the main aspect of it. It is the Coca-Cola Cup final, it is a national stadium, and the, the reason that the game was going to be played at Ibrox was to make it fair because Celtic are using it. But if Wraith Rovers are quite happy to play there, I don't see any reason why they shouldn't take the game back to Hamden. Good result yesterday for Aberdeen, and they needed it. Yes, they did. Willie Miller looked a very relieved man last night. Um, but they've got a lot of quality players, and uh, they'll come through. The media are always looking for a crisis club, and this week's tournament just happened to be Aberdeen's. Uh, we went through early in the season, uh, but they've got enough quality players to come through. But on the point, if I was a Wraith Rovers player, I would definitely want to play the the Coca Cola Cup final at Hamden. John, you're sounding a bit like a manager there, having a go at the media, but you're on the media today. Surely these things happen at the clubs, we don't make it up. Yeah, gamekeeper turned bo poacher <laughs> there, poacher turned gamekeeper, but yeah, I think, um, but the, the media do, they've got to, to get people watching the programmes, got to get people buying their newspapers, um, but that's the way the game goes in circles, and, and hopefully next week it'll be somebody else's turn, and Willie Muller will get a little bit of respite. Okay, we're going to Carlisle now, and Stephen Henderson's on the line. Stephen, hello, what's your point? about time the referees should use a bit of logic because yesterday I believe it was the Blackburn game two minutes to the end one of the players had picked up the ball after we'd gone off over the line for a throw in and then he was yellow carded he was already yellow carded prior to that and because he had been given the double yellow card he was shown the red card and was off now he was amazed by that, and looking at the yeah. Rangers game today... Right, so you think basically refs are being too petty, John? I think sometimes uh, they are. Um, I've got to watch what I'm saying here, criticising yeah. referees, because yeah. we're sometimes a bit strict up here we're, uh, regarding that. Um, but yes, I think sometimes they are a little bit petty. Sometimes um, difficult flight or bad fouls get, get let away, and then the petty things like throwing the ball away, or Mark Haley today kicking the ball away. I thought it was still in play at the time. I thought it was a bit unlucky. Um, but that will count towards a suspension for him maybe later in the year when it's important when it comes down to the crunch in the league or the, the cup. So I, I think sometimes they should be taken um, a little less seriously than, than bad fouls. 
tremendous focus now on referees, Gordon. So much uh, live television like today, and, and the nation is watching. Yeah, I mean, to talk about logic and refereeing decisions sometimes is a bit strange because it doesn't seem to go hand in hand with each other. I would say that I'd like to, s I think the refereeing decisions that are given honestly, we should just accept them. We shouldn't really change them. Where they, uh, where they prove that uh, the referee's been is wrong, you know, they're talking in Germany at the moment about changing decisions of games, playing, replaying games. They shouldn't do that. If the referee get, has given the decision, we can all criticise, but he's only got a few seconds to make his mind up. We saw a decision today, a penalty kick Rangers should have had. Everybody saw it and the referee didn't, but as I say, he gave it fairly and, and you've just got to accept that. John, you wouldn't think of uh, going into refereeing after you hang up the boots? I uh, know, because um, I know how difficult a job it is and I'm not that daft um, to, to try and do that, but it's a very difficult job that they've got, everybody knows it, and uh, we sometimes make it uh, harder than it is for them. Um, so, uh, yeah, I think, I think I'll leave that one well alone. OK, Dean Stewart's on the line now from Edinburgh. Dean, you're through. What's your point for the panel? Yeah, hello. Firstly, I'd just like to say uh, unlucky to John for losing the derby yesterday. And uh, my point is, uh, do you not think that it's a bit of a liability, Everton possibly playing 5.5 million for uh, Durant and Ferguson, considering Durant hasn't been the same since his knee injury, and Duncan Ferguson just seems to be more trouble than he's worth? Well, he's not too keen on uh, either Duncan or Ian Durant. Uh, I think everybody's, uh, you're only worth what somebody's prepared to pay for you and if Everton are prepared to pay 5.5 it's up to Rangers because they, they hold the two players' contracts. Uh, but I think uh, Duncan Ferguson will come through his, his difficult time that he's having just now once he clears everything up and I think he'll be a quality player for uh, whoever he's playing for and Scotland in, in the future. Gordon, do you think that Duncan will be back at Rangers or will Duncan Ferguson eventually sign for Everton? I think Duncan Ferguson could come back, but you know, if Everton are valuing somebody like Amakachi at three million, then Duncan Ferguson is probably worth five million because he can't score any goals either. Amakachi. So, but I think Rangers would want Duncan Ferguson back. I think he's still got something to prove to Rangers. They've spent the money. He's a good Scottish player. Like buying McLaren, you buy a good Scottish player for the future. Ferguson's in that mould. I think they'll take him back. Good advert for the game today, though. Yeah, you enjoyed it, John? Yeah, it was a great game. Uh, it wasn't a, a typical derby, tense and, and full of petty fouls. It was uh, a lot of flowing football, and, and we had the uh, added bonus of Brian Lydrup's performance. Gordon, good performance all round? Good performance from both teams. As I said, Celtic um, probably should have done a little bit better. OK, thanks very much to Gordon and to John. Back to you, Jim. OK, that's it from Scott Sport this afternoon. Your next big football date is on this channel on Wednesday. Barcelona against Manchester United in the UEFA Champions League. The programme starts at 7.20. And that's followed by Champions League highlights at 20 to 11. Then on Saturday at 12.30 on Scottish, Extra Time comes live from Tannadise prior to Dundee United's meeting with Celtic. And we'll be here again at 2 on Sunday for Scott Sport. My thanks to Paul and Morris. Hope you've enjoyed it. Bye for now. Scott Sport is produced in association with Littlewoods Pools, a bigger draw than ever.